guests besides the uh, reporter. Okay, any agenda revisions? Okay, comments or correspondence? Should we talk about Chris right yeah, now? Yeah, sure. I, I did, uh, I've had several conversations with Chris Leopold, a um, couple by phone and several by email. Um, Chris suggested that for there isn't a specific statute that's going to roll on Act 49 um, articles of agreement on composition if you can start it or not. But he suggested out of respect to the Berlin's had a chance to get together uh, that you shouldn't the Act 49 committee shouldn't be there unless well, all the members have been appointed shouldn't start meetings. Um, so that's why I suggested to Floor and pass it along today. Um, he was, um, yeah, he, he, he looked at 706B and Act 49, which does talk about appointment of members from each committee, from each town. Um, so he said, unless you had evidence of trying to uh, not join because of not wanting the committee to function, that would be something else. But Chris and I talked about it a lot, and it's really just been people's busy lives get a meeting and a quorum put together. So. Yeah, so we decided to go, we, you guys had both agendas, so we decided to go ahead and have the smaller meeting, but with the members that came of the Act 49 today, and yeah. you know, they would be able to participate. And we're not, we don't have any actions today, so it's mostly discussion. And I'll just note on along those lines that Berlin is meeting Monday night. Um, yeah. I'm part of the committee already. Pete Schober, who just showed up, um, is willing to volunteer and be appointed on Monday night to that committee, and we're still in search of a third community member to serve. Did you ask Corrine by any chance she we wanted haven't, to? I haven't, no. She was part of it before. Uh, Peter, do you want to stay with us? And here's not, I'll give you some copies. Please join yeah, us. Well, or come as long as it's a matter of record, I'm not appointed. Oh, no, it's, it, right yeah, now, here, you know, everybody would be... I'm here to fill in some of the blanks. We, we didn't really <laughs> get this news until I talked to Bill around 4. He got the news around, I don't know, 2.30 this afternoon, so... So, I don't know if this, you're jumping the gun, but is this, does that necessitate a, another meeting on Monday night of this, of the 49 committee? Yes, but we're going to see not as cool agreement right now and how we move forward. So okay. that would be part of the, the discussion today okay. to do that planning. One last question for you, Chris, is that you guys are meeting on Monday from 5.30 to 7.30? 6 to 5.30 right, to 7.30. 5.30, yeah. So if we were to have another meeting on on Monday, it, does your board meet the two hours? Thing? Probably not. I know Vera has a commitment at 7.30. I don't know about the rest of the board members. The, the reason I ask is that we were to schedule a meeting. We were thinking, I, when I was going to build this afternoon, is that we would hold the meeting at Berlin since you guys would already be there. And if we could possibly not start at 7.30, but like start at 7. I, I don't know, I'm just, I'm asking you, I'm not familiar with your agenda and your needs. I'm not pushing you either, I was. What would be, so we would have to meet again as an Act 49. An Act 49 committee to officially ratify these articles before the public hearing. There's two approaches, ideally. I'm sorry, Bill I'm, and well, I, I don't talked have my bearings about, on this. I'm, not well, sure. I, and I'm also trying to get our bearings. Uh, originally, I thought that by the time we had the public meeting, we would have the final draft, right? That was our, that was our purpose. It's looking pretty clear that to have that hearing on on January 9th, it, you know, we have not, you know, a week, not even a week to get this, this done. So I'm not saying that we would have final, final, but we would, having that, I think there should be a meeting of the Act 49 committee before we go ahead and put this in front of the public. That's just my feeling, <laughs> but it, I'm open to, this is not, you know, I, I don't so the, give orders, so I'm here to figure out what everybody, what all the communities want. So, so. we have a, uh, we're scheduled to have a January 9th public meeting to take public input on the articles. Yes. 
Um, and we're proposing that we have a, another meeting on January 7th uh, at 7 o'clock or whatever time mm -hmm. uh, for the purpose of convening the group as a whole and having said that we have at least one committee meeting, um, which is incredibly short, you know, tight timeline. And if we miss, if we miss uh, January 9th, um, are we out of time or then moving forward with these set of articles? So the other, that's a question because the, the other day that I floated to Bill that we had said before was January 11th, but it, it is really hard with the agenda and all the meetings. You saw the email that Bill mm -hmm. sent today with all of everybody's independent meetings. So we're, we're starting to push it. We're right. Not starting, we've been pushing we're it since pushing we it. started. So, so what this means is by the time we meet on January 9th for that hearing of the new articles, it might not be polished, but it will allow the, you know, the meeting that we need with the public and would allow some input. Mm -hmm. and, then, I, I, and I said to Florida today, I believe you have to be done with the articles by the 15th to, mm -hmm. to meet the 18th. I asked Chris to hold some time to do a review and publish the warning, which would have all the articles independently on them. I'm so looking at worst case and most work, so that you could have all the amendments would be done that way, and um, there's time for legal review to make sure that warning is right. Mm -hmm. So we met on the 9th, and you know the other day on the day 11th, that those dates could be used for the lawyer to finish up whatever we want. Um, and it, so what happens if um, we do not have, if Berlin doesn't appoint representatives? Um, that I, I mean, I'm just, and then I'm asking that just because if, if this scenario is that, that Berlin doesn't, um, and you know, I don't, I can't believe that that would hold up no. all the other representatives from moving forward. No. And so the same scenario is current tonight. Um, so I'm not saying, I'm saying why not move forward as the uh, Act 49 committee tonight as so opposed to waiting till Monday because if the time is going to be even tighter on Monday night and, you know, there's no versions here. I'm just saying from a practical yeah. matter, um, we, you know, all the other, I think all the other schools have appointed their members. There's been opportunity for appointing members and given our time constraints, I don't think we should wait. So, so here's what I think. I, I asked the same questions that you're asking. Okay. Today, when we found out, and I, I, I also had a conversation with Emma Simmons yesterday about if we would be holding anybody, you know, if we would be holding Berlin Harm or anything like that. We're doing what we're doing tonight is a courtesy to the Berlin Board because they haven't not appointed their mm -hmm. members because they're trying to hold the process. They just haven't been able to meet and appoint their, their members. So we're going to go ahead and have a conversation today. Um, and discuss the amendments and prioritize those amendments, so we don't so we don't waste our time today either. Then on Monday we will do that again, a little bit more informed with the larger committee. So we're not, you know, you know what I mean. Now? We're not holding any anybody, but at the same time, we're not a, we're not saying to Berlin, you know, too bad you didn't. No, no, no. So so we're not. So the thing is that we have very we have zero tolerance right now because if we don't get all of this warned by January 18, 19, we can vote. Right. So we're hoping to vote on the, well, our last day to approve the, the new legal review, the warning for the vote would be set January 19 and we were hoping to vote for Gen February 19. So we don't have time. Right. Okay. So, so so does that make sense? We're not so we're not spinning our wheels. We're still moving. This is just a discussion. We didn't have action agendas. If the discussion needs to happen again on on uh, so on Monday, that's what I was asking. If we could start a little earlier, I would hate to have to go to a meeting like really, really so late. Yes. Go ahead. Matthew. I'm curious what happens if we can't resolve the remaining issues that need to be resolved uh, by Monday night. We don't have a vote. By, by next, so if we can't resolve what we need to resolve by next Monday night, then we there would be no vote. Essentially, you're saying. Well, what I'm saying is that I'm hoping to go ahead and have that public hearing. 
well, it is not going to be perfect by the term, but I don't, if I'm looking right at the amendments that we have, I, I don't see anything too controversial. There's, it's more there's going to be one more meeting after the hearing, right, of this committee? Yes. I, I anticipate that we will have some amendments that we're presenting that we're in agreement on, and, and there might be an amendment or five that we're not in agreement on and we're taking input on. Yeah. And we'll have one last chance to deliberate. Um, and then and we need to be done by the 15. I, I just think that, I, I guess, we owe it to the public to at least. And, and I, I just want to say, for the sake of saying it, we, yeah. we don't have to discuss it now. Maybe it's more appropriate to discuss it at the end of the meeting. But I, I have really grave concerns about what this committee is doing mm -hmm. and about the wisdom of uh, whether, you know, whether we actually owe it to the public to put something in front of them or whether we owe it to them to not put something in front of them, whether that's a better choice to make, actually. Um, and I, I have many reasons for thinking that. I, again, I don't know. I, I guess... <laughs> So for, forgive me for this, but to, to paraphrase uh, Jeff Goldblum in mm -hmm. Jurassic Park, yeah. a quote that always stuck with me is that uh, I don't want to be so busy thinking about whether we can do this that we don't take the time to talk about whether we should do it. Yeah. Um, but, and I, I think that we've been talking we, a lot. Shall we have the other counter, nature has a way <laughs> of, of, of prevailing, in, which is I think Jeff yeah, but, Goldblum but as that, well in Jurassic Park. But that didn't turn out so well. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we're going to extend the metaphor. <laughs> You're right. Yeah. We could unleash the dinosaurs if we, uh, yeah, if we choose yeah. to do that. Sure. Well, the, the quote that, the I, was gonna, that, that I was going to use today is like, my, my, son had a big, my son had a big race on Sunday, and he was doing great in the first race, and then he crashed in the second one. And on Wednesday was his first day at Academy, and I said, I'm so sorry, I will be able to ski with your team. And he said, well, Mommy, I always watch this heli skier. And he always says, you know, are you going to live? Are you going to survive life or live life? And I feel like as a SU, we keep surviving. As we, that's all we do. We keep saying survive. Like, okay, this is all we can do. We are going to survive it. That's all. We never really, like, you know, live it. Like, we are trying to do our very best here. I, I really do not, you know, I, I was very much for the uh, alternative. It's about, I, I have some concerns. I am okay with us consolidating com completely. I wanted to give the public a little something. From the very beginning, we have said, let's just at least uh, give it some of each community. We're not asking for too much. So if we could prioritize the amendments and give, say, okay, there's just two amendments that are really something that 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 we need. But it seems like everything we do is just like. You know, it's the bare minimum because that's all we can we can do for now, and we're going to do it later. I don't see us picking up as a full new unified district, writing new articles of agreement in our first year or second year of operation. We're going to be like so who, whoever that committee is. You know, they're going to be swamped with things eh, to do. And I think that we're yes, I believe what you're saying, Russian. I spent I don't know. I probably wasted 45 minutes of Bill's time this afternoon going through the same thing. I'm like, you know, how do we prioritize today? Is, does it make any sense? Obviously, the easiest thing would be let's just take these articles of agreement as they gave it to us. We don't have any more meetings, and let's have the organizational meeting. That would be the easiest, for sure. Well, I don't think it's. I mean, whether it's easy or not, I, I actually think it's the it's the braver and wiser choice to at at least to narrow the scope of what we're doing considerably, if not outright uh, just like uh, discretion being the better part of valor, you know, retiring from this for the moment to take it up at a later time. Um, so one of those two things, I just think it's the better choice. I'd like to speak to that, whether it's now or, or later is really, I think, I, I guess I'm asking the committee. Or, or well, I, I think we should committee. do it now because we're, you know, why? Well, unless you want to see what I wanted to prioritize the amendments today and then see. Aren't we only making recommendations to the transition board and transition board open? No, because no, we, no, the transition no. board will no. What you say, the, the new committee that's formed with proportional membership, if that committee adopts amendments, no. it goes. 
The transition board has no authority in this matter. Okay. As long as, they're, as, as long as they're voted, the yes, too, right? <laughs> as long as they're voted by the community. Right, okay. So then that means we would have to do something, either say, or, or if we did nothing, then the default articles would go into effect by default. Um, yeah. Well, and my, my guess is that a lot of the people sitting around this table are thinking of running for the consolidated board, right? So, <laughs> uh, <laughs> no, I know there's the board who are very much not thinking about running. <laughs> 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 who are excited enough to run, <laughs> possibly. I, I don't know. I, I don't want to be the one just like trying to drive this through the ground. So we could start the meeting by approving our minutes from the last time and reviewing the draft, not reviewing the draft, and prioritizing the amendments. Or we could start the meeting by approving the minutes and, and moving into the discussion of should we even put articles to vote, yes or no. I think we should start meeting by working on the articles um, because by working on them we'll know what we are deciding to put to vote or not. And we should assemble for this purpose and we should do what we were assembled for. Okay. That's one. Uh, I'm, in, I'm in favor of approving the minutes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm in favor of discussing our options and, and settling on an approach or trying to settle on an approach because that's going to inform how we spend the rest of our time here. Yeah. We could, we could be here all night and not come to agreement. So that, that's my concern. Only for me. Good. Yeah, that's what our, our charge is. And we should yeah. stick, we should yeah, stick we by should that. Yeah, we should stick to that. Yeah. Dorothy? I have two minds, actually. Yeah. Um, we started down this road, uh, and there are some things that I think are important that we have decided to put here on the Articles of Agreement. And I guess I'm not comfortable with hoping that a new board as appoint, uh, elected in March will actually do some of the things that we presented. I just, I want to say, yeah, they'll do it, but I've had too many experiences in life where somebody has said, trust me, and in the end, I should never have. So I'm, I'm just wary of, of waiting. Do I just think of some other places where people turned out to be not so nice when it came down to, oh, we thought you would do this. Oh, no, now we have control. We're not going to do that. So that bothers me. That worries me. I think from my experience with all the people most of the people here at the table and have been in the Act 46. I, I think I can trust all of them. Um, but I also say, think we've worked on it, we've made some decisions, maybe we should just follow through on those as best we can. Anybody else? Peter or Darcy have something to add to? I'm a little bit worried that we don't have enough time to do these right. <clears throat> and we put a lot of work into it, and it's just such a tight time frame, and these are very important decisions that I, I do worry about rushing these through without the proper deliberation on them and the right polish <clears throat> that I'd like to see us have on these. So I'm a little bit of the mind to, to let the new board handle this and trust that it would be a priority for the new board as well. I can't think of many more important things for the new board to do. Jim, I think this is an opportunity for us to have an impact on the articles for the new board, and if the new board doesn't like them, then they can change them um, and propose that to the community. I think what is uh, very important given this forced merger uh, that I think our communities were not happy about being forced into uh, is that they have at least some say in how the new um, um, board and the new entity will be structured. Uh, and you know, they will have the opportunity to vote um, 
article, the, on the articles. And if they don't like them, they vote them down. Uh, they vote them down and the default will become the default article, will become the governing articles. Uh, so it's an opportunity to um, have the input uh, that I think our communities will, will want to have uh, in this new structure. Uh, and I think that having the community vote on articles, uh, they will have some buy-in in, in supporting what this new entity is, rather than having it be forced on them. So I think the, it, it's good in a lot of different ways uh, to move forward with these articles and present them. If, if communities don't like them, they vote them down. So I think one of my, since we seem to be having this conversation, Yes. Yeah, so we okay. I think one of one of my concerns is that, um, and you know, I, as I've said many times, and, and Chris at our last meeting, I was really struck by the fact that that we reversed our positions from our previous conversation a couple of years ago when we had the 706B committee, mm -hmm. because at that time, and I think it was you, I may be wrong about that, but I, I can remember like advocating that we needed to put something out to the communities to vote on. Um, and I think it was you or somebody else who said something about how, you know, that the, the electorate may not be informed enough to kind of, you know, be able to come to a, a reasoned decision about. See, I, maybe, I, it was not me because that was not what I advocated for was putting out options uh, um, rather than just say this or that. I said, if we're gonna have a vote, put out the options so the community can choose. Um, okay. In any case, my, my concern really is about that um, at the moment, you know, there is a lot, it's very difficult, I think, for j just the general voter to kind of uh, keep up with what's happening with Act for, the Act 46 process right now. So, you know, they, there, there's some awareness that there's a merger being forced by the state. Um, there's some awareness that four of our school boards have voted to join a legal action to appeal or contest mm -hmm. that decision. Um, you know, I think there's less awareness of the fact that there's going to be a transition board. There's going to be elections on town meeting day for both for local boards that still have to exist for a while and for a new board. Um, there's, and, and I think we're. So there's a lot of kind of confusion and, and, and chaos out there. And what we're proposing to do is to take a very complex piece of work. Like, you know, these articles are not easy even for us to come to grips with, let alone a, a voter in, in, the, in the, the voting booth um, to wrap their heads around. Uh, and we're going to say, OK, we're going to have a hearing on the 9th. We're going to warn a meeting on January 18th. We're going to have an election on February 19th, two weeks before town meeting day. And we know we're contesting the consolidation, but we're going to ask you to vote on what the articles would be if we did consolidate. You know, and then we're going to have this, and then the election might be postponed, because it, as it turns out, if we make some of the changes we're proposing to make, that kind of throws uh, a wrench into the gears of when we can have the election for the new board members. It might be postponed yet another month. We'd have another election, then why, another town meeting. Why, why with, would that be? Because the... Uh, and I don't know, I know we were talking to the lawyer about this, but you know, if we amend these articles uh, and there is a vote on February 19th, mm -hmm. there is a 30-day period during which uh, any vote in the state can be recalled. Mm -hmm. And so if we're within the recall uh, period, it's conceivable that we can't actually act on what the articles say, which is to hold an election for new board members for the new union board on town meeting day. We'd have to wait till that 30-day recall period expires. Then we then we then we were talking with Chris Leopold today. There are versions that could be accurate that you've had for amendments there, and there are versions that couldn't be. So Chris said, um, actually, if you were to change the configuration of the board, if you're going to touch Article 10, this is where, and if you're going to change Article 10 you're going to start to get into the place of where you're within 30 days. It, his opinion was that you would be more protected if the if it were to add an extra member in FY20, Flora and I were talking about this today, yeah. that, and, um, so that, that if you were to do that, that since that 
isn't happening until the town meeting, that election wouldn't happen until town meeting in 2020, mm -hmm. you could be okay in running for the original 10. But if you were to do any changing for now, for now, anything that we're going to change for this year, budget and or <coughs> any, because you're on January 14th, and I, I think I brought the warning with me. I hope I did. I had it. It might have been that pile I gave you for, or it's it in my book. I don't, I don't see it. The electorate is asked at that open district meeting to approve methods for voting and methods for um, all other items whether it's going to be Australian ballot or not, and uh, I have my bag. Um, and at that point, you've got that set for this year. Yeah. If you vote articles before town meeting that affect and change that for this current year, you would then have to wait time to make sure that they go through the petition. Yeah. So it's, it's, it's a kind of a, Matthew was right, and then well, the other part is right about this year. It's how you impact this current year and the wait for the petition time period to get into effect, to wait should, to make sure that those articles aren't petitioned for recall vote. Mm -hmm. Either way, they're voted, so, so, up or down. So, so just bottom line, I, I just wanted to say that I, I was in favor of voting two years ago, or whenever it was, because I thought it gave us an opportunity to do two things, one of which was to, to draft our own articles really from, you know, soup to nuts, which is something I don't think we have the opportunity to do here. And then also to take the time to really go out and engage with our communities and talk to them about why we had drafted these articles and what the choice was for them in terms of the vote up or down, a, a relatively simple vote in that sense, and to take the time to engage people and inform people and answer questions and raise a comfort level with what we were proposing. And I don't think either of those things are possible now. We don't, we don't have the opportunity to draft our own articles soup to nuts. We only have the opportunity to tweak and possibly super complicate the articles in many ways. And we definitely don't have the time to engage our communities in a way that is going to allow them, I think, to vote in an informed manner on relatively important things. Um, and so the result of that is going to be you know, people, I, I feel, not understanding why the vote's being called, not understanding what they're being asked to vote on, um, and being just generally frustrated by the entire process. Um, so my, you know, there's other reasons. I mean, the, the complications that some of the changes we proposed would create also, I think, are, are challenging. Uh, but my, my preference would be that we really put the brakes on this and consider I know there's this sort of momentum and a sense of impetus that we put in all this time and effort and we, we feel a responsibility, you know, but, you know, we, we came late to the process. You know, we, you know we, we probably missed a window of opportunity some time ago, even earlier last year, to start this process. Um, and I just don't know that we have the time to do it right. Um, the, it, it, the last thing I want to say is that it seems to me when I was thinking about this that there are two things that we've talked about that people seem to feel really, really strongly about. So one of which is school closure. That's obviously, you know, we, we rated it our most difficult issue and we deadlocked so far on discussing sort of what to do about it. And obviously people are concerned about that and want to put some safeguards in place on that. And the second thing is the local school councils because we're concerned about local representation and voice so it seems to me like if we if we wanted the rest of the changes that are in here, you know, from adding a new board member, you know, I think a, a board could recommend to the electorate to do at a later time, for example, so we don't have to touch Article 10. And there's other there's many other changes in here that I don't think are necessary or super urgent that we do right now. Make sure that we get in front of the electorate for them to vote on. Well, and that's what why I wanted to prioritize articles today because I was feeling the same way. There's three actually that I was seeing, but I, I felt like I had no right to tell you guys which ones I felt that were, but that we could talk about what we've been talking about and just do what we did before, like not a table because we don't have time to vote, but just prioritize. Like this could be just a recommendation, this we, you know, we gotta have it. And then, and then put it out to vote. Rick? Yeah, I mean, two years ago, I'm just saying, you know, I think in developing articles two years ago, 
or even eight months ago, you know, would have been an act of futility. The AOE and the state school board have changed the rules, and basically, you know, all through this process, what value would they have had? You know, and I, I, the deadlines in this, we don't control. And I suspect this is pretty deliberate because we can't make good decisions. I mean, there are as good minds in this room as, that we, as we've got. We've got lawyers and we've got, you know, some really intelligent people. You know, I, I still get very nervous about just letting, and not for the sake of just defeating these default, or, you know, saying no to default articles. But I do think we have some specific interests that we should probably protect and do the best we can to at least get in front of those, that future board. They can change them, you know, that, but I, you know, just ethically, I think we've got, we, have, we always have an obligation to do something. I mean, it seems like you've developed some good changes to these. So I, I think the way that I'm seeing it right now is that we, we're divided as a board, but we have, at, at least I'm seeing three or maybe four people willing to look at the amendments tonight and prioritize, prioritize those. And we can make a decision at the end of this meeting of how to move forward for a possible, you know, possible hearing on the nine? Um, but but we'll let's get things, I think. Um, in um, the law, you can have sunset provisions. So if we're truly interested in um, considering articles again with sufficient time, uh, we can have an article that whatever articles are passed this year, um, by the electorate, if any, and if, if none are passed, then the default articles will sunset after three years. Um, in that new articles, the, the board has to put out new articles um, to the community for repo. Um, and that would do a couple of different things. One is to create time uh, for engagement. Uh, it would also give time for whatever articles were in place to operate uh, for a period of time and see how they operate and then make, if need to, make changes to the system uh, and forces the new board to um, propose and work on new articles. So you, you're basically saying whatever is voted in now will, will become void and not operational, so it forces you to, as a board, to redo the articles, consider them again, and present them again uh, to the community for a vote. So it really touches on a lot of the concerns here that um, in terms of engagement and enforces an action as opposed to, well, maybe we'll get to it, maybe we won't. Um, because in order to continue operating, we would have to get to it. I'm not, I'm not qualified to, to speak to the reality of that. But, yeah, I'm not qualified either to, to, to speak to that. And it does scare me a little bit uh, to have to, <coughs> but to have, but because I don't know what the issues would be at the time in three years. I, I have no, I, I have no idea of what this board will be dealing with. So just to say that their articles are going to be shut down until they come up with new years, ones. Three years to plan. I mean, if the concern is, oh, we can get to them when we have a, a, a different board, that is the same concern okay. when it forces a priority to the article. Or the other side? Yeah. I get my bearings, but, uh, uh, just to speak to what we do tonight, I'm I'm fine going through the amendments before us if we can return to the conversation of, of you know how we want to what we want to present. Um, but I think we should really be disciplined about it. We stop at eight, which means we have to stop okay, looking at articles at seven thirty or seven fifteen or whatever it is. Yeah, I, I was actually hoping for 6.30 to Great. stop looking at amendments. Excellent. I, I was not going to go because the entire, this entire committee, so the, besides our new members, are familiar with the existing articles. I wanted to prioritize the amendments and just see truthfully what can be a recommendation and what are amendments that we really can't wait to, to have. And then if we're done 
with that, then we would be more informed to make the decision of how we want to we want to have a hearing at all on January 9th. I think that is the biggest question for me: is that what are the meetings we have? Is like, do we want to put this to vote and have a hearing on the 9th? Yep. Sort of where this is headed. So, if we could uh, move into discussion just for order purposes for our minute, take it to. Can I have uh, before that a, a motion to approve the minutes of 1918? So yeah. moved. Okay. Okay. Did everybody have a chance to read them? Thank you, Matthew, for all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Abstain? One abstain. Okay. Opposed, I guess. Yeah. Now moving into discussion. Where it says 2.1 review draft articles of agreement. What I was hoping was to, if you guys could uh, briefly move into the draft timeline that Bill put for us. And I just want to just laser point in the conversation that we've been having right now. So if you go into um, hearing of new articles, January 9th. Up there before that, where is the other date? So it's January 9th. If we had the hearing, we need to have, like we said, if you could just highlight those, because that would be what we are dealing with when we make that final decision. So we have January 3rd and 7th, which is be Monday, have that possible meeting from 7 to 9. January 9th, have the hearing. Warren, January 18th, and possibly have a vote on February 19th. So with that in mind, if you could move into the draft amendments, recommendations that we had. The first page, I was not going to go through the big document. I was just going to use the two-pager. So we have the two-pager. In, in finance, these were recommendations that after we had given all our stuff to Chris Duffel, he gave us this. So can I just hold this up so everyone knows what you're working on? Yeah, so this this one, the two pages, the two pages. All I did was copy paste what we had, so we just had one, one document. So in finances, Bill and I talked about C today. In the restricted funds, we talked about this uh, each individual board meeting lately, but the foreman districts will transfer to the union school district any pre-existing specific endowments or other restricted accounts, including student activity and related accounts that may exist on June 30th, 2018. Any scholarship funds, endowments, or similar accounts held by the school district prior to June 30th, 2018, having specified terms of use, will be used in accordance with said provisions. When Bill and I talked about this today, he was saying that this is already in the law. That's what Chris Leopold advised That's what Chris Leopold said, so that, that we don't need to add it, that it's already in the law. So, Check however you want to. Any questions on that? No. no. Okay. So then in Article 10, it, we said effective January 1st, 2018, if we could say effective January 1st, 2020, the Board of School Directors shall be expanded to include one member elected at large for a total of nine. Should be 11. Should be 11. Should be 11. Should be 11. Yeah. 11. 11 members. The new at-large member will be elected by a vote of the entire electorate of all towns in the new union district. Votes of the entire electorate shall be counted together, commingled, without being first counted at the town level. The at-large member shall be elected at the 2020 annual meeting of the new union district. So that wouldn't change anything in for now. So in theory, with the conversation with Chris, we could go ahead and elect our members for operation for 2019 without having to wait those 30 days. So I'm not going to cross that one out. I cross the other one out. <coughs> just yes. to refresh my memory, that's just so that we don't have an even number. Yeah, so that we are not five to five, then we can. What was the year of the, the first three? 2020. Okay, it's not 2018. It did not be effective January 2020. He took up one that he wrote for sure. voluntary. That's fine. Funding. I just, yeah. just <coughs> it. And, and like I said, I just copy paste what he had sent, so yeah. I didn't. And same with the one above. He, he just, in, I asked Chris, I said, don't 
don't reword the whole thing for us. Just give no, us that's fine. Minutes. He had that for another district. So as we're having discussion on, on this, is that something that is not, some, I, I thought that was something that we wanted. And yes. This, yeah, yeah. this is supposed to be 10 members also? It's 10? 11. Or 11. It should be 11. Yeah, it should 11. say, it should be 11. written out as the word 11 and 11 members in bracket. And then what what is the take on whether this, you know, sort of this creates a new good. a new electoral schedule? Or so the, like what, what Chris said, told me this yeah. afternoon was uh -huh. he felt that if we were out one year that you, we wouldn't have to wait for the petition if this were done as a separate piece. Okay. Mm -hmm. so, right. so rather than... When you say as a separate piece, like like because we don't want to lose all of Article Ten. Yeah. If, right. if we admit, make it a separate amendment, and this is one of the things that I didn't get enough. I wish I had questioned Chris more because we were going through. We literally had a pretty long list we were going through. Uh huh. Because before he's told me that he thinks this needs to be part of Article Ten. Uh huh. So I've got to get back with him and say, can we have this as outside uh, of Article our, Eighteen? Or yeah, something. whatever number you want, but not because we don't want to lose Article Ten. Right. If we are amending Article Ten, then we just then we just put that into that thirty day waiting yeah. period for yeah. petitions, right. and that's why it's confusing. I mean, I get I can say both of you are the way you both said it was right. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I can't say one's wrong or one's. Yeah, and I thought from our government because we did ask that specific yeah, question, yeah. and we spent quite a bit of time talking. So about I spent this I spent today, a time so. with with Chris saying, let's make sure, Chris, if we want to go to eleven. And but I said, I just don't want to get the 30 day, because mm -hmm. I had laid out a calendar, which I didn't bring to you tonight, that I was bringing to you to show you what the difference is, is if, if we have to wait 30 days for a petition. Yeah. I mean, it puts our budget vote almost, I mean, very, very late, almost to somewhere in June. So, so I'm just since we're going down this amendment, let's just call this Article 15. Since we, you know, it doesn't okay. really matter right now, you can just say, that would be Article 15, and we have that, which has one <coughs> amendment. Uh, in the next uh, article, if I could have somebody else that has better voice to read it, any volunteers? I'm not reading. Okay. Um, I won't change my voice for it now, so. <laughs> the new Board of Schools and Rectors shall develop policy and programs for offering intrant district choice to families of audience of students enrolled in grades for which the Union District operates multiple buildings as soon as reasonably practicable following the first year of operation. Choice may be limited only where necessary to the legitimate operational needs of the Union District and any applicable legal requirements. Policies respecting choice shall consider uh, issues including, but not limited to, transportation, socioeconomic equity, proximity to the selected building, uh, unity of siblings, and the capabilities of the sending and receiving schools. I had you know, written this as just a recommendation. I don't, I don't think that we need to make this an article uh, right now. But what do you guys think? I think we do make it an article right yeah. now. Yeah? Okay. <clears throat> Personally, I'm a little concerned about the sentence in italics. Is that, is that why it's in italics? This was from Chris uh, Local. This is something that he used in a different district. I don't, I don't think it should be in that house. Um, you know, unless he was emphasizing it for some reason. But I don't think we should, um, if in final form, it shouldn't, I don't think it could be in Dallas house. Yeah. Um, the only reason I was seeing as a recommendation is because we, we're, what it, they are, to me what it's saying is that we're going to develop policy and programs. So we're not, it's, it's like a, Recommendation is not like a, or not like an action. Well, but the italicized no. sentence is is more um, of a constraint or a, or a yeah. forcing a mandate. condition. A mandate. Uh, it's saying like it's not up to you. You know, it's you can't limit choice. Well, unless it's it's, unless it's necessary to the legitimate operational needs of the union district and any applicable legal requirements. Right, and then and then it, it <coughs> gives the reasons for potential. Limitation in the following sentence. But what if there are other reasons for limiting choice? Yeah. That maybe you can, yeah. Well, but it says including but not limited to. And so that's that's open ended. Scott? Sorry. Well, where does it say that? It says policies respecting choice shall consider issues including but not limited to 
and that goes for the one who lives in transportation, socioeconomic, the last sentence. Yeah, but I think I don't see those two sentences as being um, necessarily related. They are. They, they because attend, they the attend, the yeah, house one starts with choice may be limited only where, and then the next sentence talks about policies respecting choice. Policies regarding, is that not policies regarding choice? Shall consider. Shall consider. But say, shall consider doesn't mean, doesn't say whether th yeah. those things uh, limit or don't limit choice policy. But the preceding sentence does say that. It does make, it does make a specific well, prescription as to what. Okay, but, you know, but the you limitations may be come out of these other issues. I mean, Scott has something to say. Hold okay, on one minute, so it's not a. Sorry, sorry. Okay. Just more question. Yeah. I guess I'm, I'm just kind of puzzled. I thought the whole purpose of, or the whole nature of the merger would be that there, there's no more, um, there are no more barriers. Uh, but it sounds as though there, there are kind of ghost school districts that, um, if, that are kind of collection basins for the specific schools. Is that, is that the I, I, idea? I guess I'm I thought confused that, by the question. I um, don't know. Sorry. I, and I'm confused Sorry. by the situation that created the, confu the, yeah, the question. That Can you repeat the question? Um, Sorry. Yeah, um, I thought that in a merged district, there, the whole concept of choice is, um, is sort of irrelevant. That basically you have um, you know, five elementary schools um, ES1, ES2, ES3, ES4, ES5, whatever, and, um, and a single district in which children attend schools, and then it all kind of gets worked out. It's not, there are no, there are no longer any town school districts. Basically right? what you're saying is choice to any school. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, but, but it's not, uh, the whole concept of choice um, is, is irrelevant. So can I give you a point of information from an urban setting? Sure. If we were in an urban setting, you might see um, you might see a map of area that are catchment areas for elementary schools by city blocks or other things. While there still is choice in between, and it's all set by the school board. I don't think that there's anything that requires you to have choice. I don't think there's anything that limits you from having choice. I think it's a discussion either for the articles or for the board. <coughs> and that's what you're here talking about tonight. But when I look at other districts that have one board that have multiple elementary schools, even multiple middle schools and high schools, they have attendance areas sometimes. Sometimes they have choice between attendance areas. Sometimes they have choice among the whole district. Uh, I've seen all sorts of different ways that the boards have tackled that. So I think, you know, I don't think there's, I, I don't think there's any assumption either way right now, and I think that's a part of the formation and discussion process. And I think that where the, the, to provide some context, maybe, if I'm lucky, I'll get this right. But we had discussed before the fact that without, if there is no policy about kind of who attends where, then it's kind of made on like a case-by-case -case basis, which might be overly subjective or even challenging to the system because it requires somebody to actually make a decision in each case. So with the, I guess the assumption I think that we came to was that a board would have to develop a policy around this issue in order to, for the, for that to function effectively or to avoid problems. Please, anybody correct yeah, me? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what we said. I, 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 I was trying to look for it. <coughs> brought over a policy that Maple mm -hmm. Run, for example, did of how they did, you know, specific amount of students. Mm -hmm. And Chris and I went at this argument for a little while at two of our meetings, and, and, and basically, you know, I'm assuming that we're gonna have five strong schools, right? That we're not gonna just all gonna wanna go to Berlin. We're all gonna wanna go to, you know, whichever, so that, that's what I think that this would be a recommendation to develop a policy, but they can see if they come up with, if Bill had suggested before magnet schools, or if they, you know, whatever, however we, our schools, Face up for right now. I th I'm assuming that we're all going to, you know, keep the character of our local communities and our strong communities. We all want to keep our schools open, right? So, so this is a recommendation on. It's not a recommendation. Not a recommendation as, uh, as written. 
It's as, not a recommendation. Uh, yeah, that's what I mean. Uh, uh, that's not what I mean, but that's what I was feeling that should be a recommendation because I think we would need more information of how we are operating and how we are, what would be, what would make the most sense for all our communities. That would be a hard one to, to know right now. So I think the, the italicized language um, is, it's a signal, I think, uh, of saying that there are legal constraints on what you can do with drugs. Um, in terms, because it is one district now, and to say that a student from one town couldn't say, I want to go to Berlin, um, you have to have some pretty good reasons for that. Um, because if everything's being pooled, uh, then all the resources, including all the educational resources that are allocated to each school, um, should be available to each of the students in the community as a whole. Um, and that's why I think the, um, the, the italicized language is, I think, signaling that, saying choice may only be, limit, may be limited only when necessary. Uh, and it's, it's, a hot, it's, a, it's, a, it's a sobering fact uh, that we take into account. Because I think there, there are equal protection issues um, that would be involved here. I, well, I'm a little bit confused by the word wording of that sentence and mm -hmm. just the way you said it. Has, I keep going back. Maybe I'm just re misreading it. But when it says choice may be limited only, to me that's saying unlimited choice. Well, but it lets you limit it but for these reasons. It, it, it provides the mechanism for limiting choice, but basically is also saying that you have to have some really good reasons for what limiting choice, almost like if you limit speech as a government entity, you have to have really good reasons for it. It's, it's not probably as strict as that, but it's, it's pointing out that you know this entity now that is being created, it's not, it's not your neighborhood school anymore. And I would suggest that residency alone is not a reason for saying that you're gonna go to this school. Um, you know, we talked about that as, as so, one of the factors, but... but And that's why I think that we need more information, because there's a lot of things that would come into play in the transport, like we talked about before, transportation and all, like, right now, if you said free choice, we, we probably would be looking at just the students that the parents would advocate for the kid to go somewhere, you know, that can transport them, mobilize them, and advocate for them. So we would, as we're trying to move into more equity, we would be doing that last in my mind right now without so so we would have to have a, a, a policy of how would we be able to provide transportation across all the schools mm -hmm. before we would be able to say this right I, I, that's just in my mind so mm -hmm. i think as a state we haven't figured out even in high school how to make choice really free choice right you have some choice but it's not really you know i can't say i want to send my daughter to and just your academy, just like that, you know, you can, you know, there's those, things that those, you can do. Those political lines are still established. They aren't, they're erased here. Yeah. In this, this instance, so, if we're, so if, if we're looking, if you look back at your timeline mm -hmm. that we just looked at to be able to put this out to vote, it, my concern is that we do, at the moment, we do not have enough more. That this is something that we can put at the end. Remember how we talked about some recommendations that we could give to the board? So we could say, you know, you should develop a policy for choice or whatever we want to call it by 2020, you know, or by, you know, it gives you two years. Okay. All right, but that it won't, we, we don't even know how we're going to budget together right now. We don't even have a culture of how we budget all together. I think those, that two-year window is already preserved in the other articles by saying that nothing will change in terms of how the classes are arranged or where kids are going to school for the next two years. So I think that window is established, at least in the other articles that they're voted in. Um, I think this article is putting the, uh, again, an obligation on this new board so, to develop these policies on choice. So is this, is this article a must-have? For everybody? Not to me. No. Okay. Chris? No. Darcy? No. no. Yes. Dorothy? Yeah. There's a recommendation that says you just wanted. Okay. Scott? I, and and I it's just, it's not a vote because we don't have any actions. I'm just like 
you know, like straw poll. I, I, I don't object to the sentiment, which is yeah. to say that yeah. the board yeah. doesn't rule it out. That the yeah. board of school directors, you know, should. should. I don't yeah. like the word shall. I think that the language in this is overly prescriptive for me. Overly what? But would overly you, prescriptive. <coughs> it's, would, it's definitely mandatory. Would you be comfortable yeah. with a recommendation to the board that develop a policy? <clears throat> would that be enough? I'm looking at. Is that what this says? No, this says no, shall. No, sh shall no. develop a policy. So, but what, what I'm what I'm trying to what I'm trying to do, uh, Chris, is like. Like we said, the other article was article number 15, and I'm trying to say that this is not going to be article 16. That's just my feeling, but this is going to move into the line of recommendations, not an article to vote on. You know, I think the lawyer's really saying this because if, if you don't have something like this, you're going to be faced with um, people coming and saying, I want my kid to go to this school, and you're going to say no. But well, what's why not? Yeah. Chris, Chris, but like you said before, I think Floor's saying let's let the board take care of it. But because what you said earlier is that that two year, it's already it's, it's already, already set. set right? So so why? I mean, I guess why do we need this now? Um, because it, because at the end it's of two years, if the board hasn't done it, there won't be anything saying well, nothing that says well, we we didn't have to do it, uh, and I think it's going to be disruptive. Because at the end, you have this two-year hiatus um, of, of developing the time um, to see how things uh, sugar out and developing a policy in response to it. I mean, I don't think Chris Leopold would recommend something like this lightly. I mean, do, this is a, I don't remember which district this was written for. Harwood. Was it Harwood? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So is it in effect in Harwood? Yeah, it was part of their bylaws. Yeah. So that's where it came from. Okay. So uh, should it the inspiration for it? Yeah, right. should it be reduced to just say that though? Just to just the article is the board needs to shell that first sentence instead of trying to <coughs> the other I, verbiage. I, I, you know, I think yeah, wait, 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 wait. Uh, personally, I think there's a great example of how we have something that's complex enough that the ten of us can't come to agreement <laughs> on it. We put this before thousands of voters. We're maybe doing ourselves a disservice. So can we, we can under, we underestimate the understanding of our community members? Um, otherwise, you could use that for any reason to say, "Oh, we are not going to send this to the vote because just." Too well, much. I don't feel that way about so, the number of board members. I feel I feel differently. I would have said that two years yeah. ago, but under the current context, I just I just think that we're yeah. we're injecting like you know an incredible dose of. Of chaos here by putting this out within the time frame that we have and the conditions that we have and all the other things that are going on. So that's, yeah. So we're going to stay within this time frame <coughs> reading the amendments. What I'm going to do with, the, with this one is that, you know, we'll bring this back up for discussion on Monday, assuming that we will have a Monday meeting. Yeah. I, I just think there's so many people, the word choice is being thrown around nationally for everything. And so the people are going to be really interested in this and want to know what the policy is. And I think, but I, I I think we need to yes. make sure that they develop a policy sooner rather than later. And Shell will require that. Bill. One of the things that choice has shown across the nation is that choice actually um, what makes the equity divide greater. Mm -hmm. No matter where it's been done, we see it happening in pre-K right now in Vermont. So I don't see that this says choice one way or the other, but um, it is one of the things that actually makes a greater divide. And you as a board, of, your boards that you're all part of have told me very loud and clear to try to reduce our equity, our gap and our divide and our, between our students. I've, I've seen it and that's in, been proven in Massachusetts multiple, multiple with times. some of my that's friends that their kids have their kids have choice around Cambridge and Newton and, and they have kids that are siblings that can't get into the same Mandarin school as their siblings. So like they are, you know, and then the kids that live in that neighborhood, they're commuting like really far. So one is going to a Spanish school because can't get into the Mandarin school. It, it's just like really, you know, crazy. And the parents that are doing that are the ones that can't afford it. And now they're busing kids from outside of the city to make those schools a little bit more diverse. I, it's just uh, so I think it's something that we need to 
know, maybe not study, but like think really thoroughly, you know, how how much choice we win, how much, you know, I, I, I don't know, I just really want the five schools to be the best schools that they can be for their towns. And then how, do we, how do we, in articles, ensure that a board is going to allocate the resources necessary to each school to ensure that it, it, there's an equitable education at that school? So, we haven't even talked, we haven't talked about that. Yeah, um, we talk about the word equity a lot, but we don't have any mechanism to ensure any in each of the elementary schools. Yeah, and uh, to me that's part of, it's gonna be a budget culture that is gonna to have to be created and then with, with time it'll be easier and it's gonna be hard at the beginning. I, I don't know, I haven't participated in a board like that before, but as if we're gonna stay focused on this particular, does, does this really need to be an article right now, considering our time frame? Okay. Means why not? Why shouldn't it be on the ball? Um, if if you so, and we'll bring it back because we don't have a great. We have more that are like not an article. We'll just bring it back on the ninth. Yeah. On the ninth. So yeah, on the seventh. Yeah, Sorry, it, uh, I had said seventh before, and on the, on the seventh, if we have a meeting, so, yes. Yeah. The new article is. Yeah. Below, I copy pasted the other part of that article, but the input on policy and budget development. It, <coughs> we had different ways that we wrote the community councils, and I think this was Chris's uh, the first paragraph interpretation of that. The Washington Central Unified. Uh, can I have somebody else? Sure. Uh, the Washington Central Unified Union Board of School Directors shall provide opportunity for local input on policy and budget development. Structures to support and encourage public participation within the Union School District will be established by the Board of School, Board of School Directors on or before December 1st, 2019. Can we read the whole next page? Yeah, not the whole page, but I think that what he was trying to do and I wanted your input is uh, sort of uh, do a smaller take on the community councils and it, to me it, <coughs> that first paragraph is it, not oh, okay. clear enough I don't know so we have to do that but also the other one includes uh, some of the parts that we were uh, worried about so this article is where I thought we could bring up uh, community councils but I don't know how you guys yeah. I just want to ask for clarity. What, what's the purpose of the yellow highlighting? Like, the yellow that, highlighting what is, is what, we, what was, I just copy pasted it from what we did in the article. So when we put it in here, I just wanted it to be complete and not. So you're saying this was our language. That was <coughs> and then, our language. And then I guess Chris's response about some of the legal, um, you know, ramifications or implications or something, right? That's where the bullets are? Yeah, so he was concerned on the three, the three last, uh, not the three less. Uh, in if you look at the uh, where it says identify student learning needs based on data, establish school based goals, provide input on budget resource priority, and provide feedback on district policies. Those are the three that he identified as being uh, worrisome. You know what I mean? Like yeah. It, it, so what I was thinking. Uh, so you're saying these three, the first two sentences, I'm sorry, on the previous page, are what Chris has recommended as language for this article. Yes. Yeah. So, but it doesn't say anything about anything. Oh, it doesn't say anything about the council. Exactly, that what that's what I'm saying. <laughs> <clears throat> so. So, um, so the choice is that or the article 15 that we have in there? Yeah, so what I was right. saying is that since there was a concern on that, on those four, uh, four bullets, that we could use, maybe use the, the last four bullets as well. Uh, yeah, so a school board may also direct a superintendent to seek input from a school based council of issues like principal hiring, school district communications. There are initiatives like we talked at our last full board meeting of you know how the representative base could and family family and community engagement. 
So that it say a little bit more about community councils, or or we just say that a school board. Yeah. You, 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 you're just picking parts of. I was just picking the last part, since there was some concern about identifying data and establishing school right. goals. Okay. So I was picking just the last uh, last part. Okay. And take out the also. And take out the what? The also because it also you know in case something addition. Yes. So, yeah. Does that make any? Or no sense, or I just wanted to say community councils, otherwise, you know, what <laughs> that that first paragraph doesn't really say. But if we take the other part, then we take out the murky, the murky stuff. Uh, can you say specifically, like, what you are, are suggesting that get added? Is it, the, is it this second paragraph, these structures may include but not be limited to? Is that what you want to say? So uh, these structures may include but not be limited to school councils that have an advisory responsibility in key areas. Uh, well, is this what you're proposing? Yes. And, then, <laughs> and the last, you, you the last take, three bullets. Right. So you have the first paragraph and then the last three, the bullets. Last three bullets where it starts, the school board may direct the superintendent and then the things after that as that would be the article. Yes. Okay. What, I'm sorry, I don't know so, where we are. Yeah. Where we are. So, this, this <laughs> paragraph? Is it down what does it do? It just means the same bullets that are not controversial and don't. It's a little different, but... Uh, it's the same And I can clean it up and say, you know, as long as... Can we? Okay. Can we move the? The first paragraph says that the, that that uh, first of all, it's the wrong year, June thirtieth. It's got to be at least two thousand nineteen. And I guess I guess I'm going to ask if we can move that deadline back because it seems to me like an incredibly rapid requirement for the new a new board theoretically elected in March and constituted sometime that same month to be able to establish local school councils in every in every community by end of June. Um, I don't know, I'm just wondering about I just so asking should we say by the next March? Yeah, or 2020? Or could, could be 2020, yeah, that makes sense to me. Okay. Um, and then, so. is there any of the stuff that Chris has put in here in these bullets, is that specifically citing problems that he saw in this language? Yeah, that's no. a, all, yeah. Those, all those bullets. Yeah, those bullets were where we all sent him. I understand. So the only ones that he didn't have conflict with were the, the, the four that I'm showing you. The, but how does, how does taking out these, these bullets, yeah. these, these bullets are Chris saying, these are these are limitations on what the school board actually can do. So, so wait, he was re he was responding to the paragraph that's on top. That way, where it starts, the new school district board shall provide timely and sufficient blah blah blah, all the way to where it says and hiring of principals. That was what was written, was given to him. From here down, from there below, each of those bullets are his his reaction to that. Paragraph. Right, so this isn't language that he's suggesting we include in the no. article. These are his comments. It's his, his comments. comments. He's saying here are statutes that govern what a school board can and cannot delegate or can and cannot direct a superintendent to do. He's not suggesting this should be part of the article. He's just saying, like, if you're going to write what's yeah. above here, you should know that there's a bunch of laws in place or statutes so that... So these bullets, we send him those bullets. Which bullets? Identify student learning needs based on data, establish school-based goals, all the bullets we said. What he commented is what Bill is showing here and where he put the, the statute, that first bullet. Okay. So you're saying the first bullet is from Chris. Yeah, what I'm saying is that if we could concentrate on that first. I'm trying to understand. Define, define, the bullets are just the dots, right? So yeah. just for clarification. That's right, yes. I'm trying to understand what came from Chris and why. 
it's not clear to me because it's all it's all highlighted yellow. So it all looks like it's all just. I, I took together. it out of the document that I understand we sent why, them, but that's why I'm, I'm what, saying, that's what, why I'm asking it, for the question. I don't I'm understand. looking at Holly because I thought that we had copy pasted this entire thing for 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 him, and then he added. Where? So he added the first bullet. He added that first bullet. What else did he add? Anything else? Everything else is stuff that we drafted or that we sent to him. We copy pasted it from the from the stuff from Nicole that we had that day. From Nicole. Mace. Mace. Uh, when we did the the updated of this, the who and the what and the why of school council. So, but we had it in. I just I, I, so, apologize. So I apologize. I just don't remember like seeing these bullets before, but I, that's probably so not the, my the language that we're using is pretty much what she gave us. The new SB shall provide timely and sufficient opportunity for local input of, on policy and budget development structures to support and encourage public participation. We think the new here it says as they will be established by the new board of school directors on or before June 30, 2018. That's why the language we just yeah. copy pasted okay. it. These structures may include but not be limited to local school councils that have an advisory responsibility in key areas, including but not limited to the new SB budget development and hiring articles. She goes ahead and lists all the authority where we can have or not have authority. So we just copy paste those bullets. So those are not from Chris. What Chris did is he talked to Bill and Bill put notes on that. Actually, Chris, Chris, yeah. On, on pink notes yeah. on, on that. So what I did is like, I, what I was saying is like, the only note one that he didn't have, having read what we got from, from, from Nicole, or from this from Nicole, the only one that he didn't have anything to say that will compromise or make it murky were those four bullets. Principal hiring process, school and district communications, learning initiatives for proficiency-based grading, and family and community engagement activities. Right. So, so you know the new recommendation. So here is some part of what the, the a recommendation was is that the recommendation that the board includes a student board member ex officio. You know, and Chris said, does not think we need to write anything unless we wanted a strong statement. Not necessary. Statute allows it to happen already. So what I was doing, I was just cleaning up. That's so what Chris McVeigh just said. If we were comfortable with that first paragraph in those four bullets as saying enough for community councils or not. We sent him that entire thing. Yeah. Sounds like he's saying there are certain things you can't delegate, but I don't think this article delegates anything. It yeah. just talks about advisory yeah. councils. I think it was and that's what about, we want. <coughs> about whether the council would have expertise in, in the first set of bulleted areas of policy, budget, hiring, or identifying student needs, issues like that, that I think he thought would be on, probably beyond the expertise of the school based council. And that's why he was suggesting that those not be, mm -hmm. um, is my impression yeah. based on the edits here, yeah. um, not be part of any article or recommendation. Uh, involving school based council, so basically limiting yeah. the expectations for it. Yeah. And the date didn't seen. come from him either, the date just came because we copy pasted right. what we had. That was presented so to him. That was presented to him, so we can change the date to June uh, 30, 2020, is what you were saying, Matt? Yeah. And I mean, he, I, did, he, did say, he did say specifically, he suggested not having the hiring. Part in the articles. Um, this is in his comment number number eight. It's recorded by. So this is on page seventeen of the. I'm sorry, the other document, with that includes his comments, and the the last sentence of the first paragraph. And this plays off of earlier language. He would mm -hmm. suggest not to have the hiring part in the articles. But then, so the bottom four bullets, it says the school board may direct a superintendent to seek input from a school-based council mm -hmm. right. on the hiring that's process. Why that's why I'm raising it. I don't think that, like, just because there's no comment attached to those bullets doesn't mean that Chris had nothing to say about them. 
It's just I, that his, yeah, but his I comments think are contained. I, I, well, that could be too, but I think it was the way that it was written too. So the school board may also direct a superintendent to seek input from the school. It's still, the power is still in the school board. The school board may also direct the superintendent to seek input from a school-based council on issues such as. Can I just ask us a question? Yeah. So how is this different than how we do things now? What does this try to drive differently? Because we have, we as a school board are not doing the interviews for the hiring anyways. They have, we have community members yeah, involved, right? Yeah. How is this trying to be different than, than that? Or is it just trying to solidify that? I think it's depending how it is looking for local uh, input on hiring. The, assuming that hiring the principal is what sort of sets the tone of that school, right? So it's not saying that they're going to be in charge of so hiring, but they should be okay. taken into consideration because they would have a, a good understanding of that community. Okay, Scott. Thanks, Joy. I have to Sorry. apologize. Yeah. I know I've walked into this movie practically when the credits are rolling. But, it's um, okay. We've been like <laughs> fast but, forward ever since. Yeah. I, I'm just wondering if it might be possible to fold this, mm -hmm. the, um, the, the community advisory councils, yeah. Yeah. into the idea of the representative school district meetings. Um, since there seems to be some convergence, some natural convergence there, and um, in which you know the the advisory councils could grow out of the the um, members of the representative body, mm -hmm. um, which would already give them a kind of standing and um, and you know commitment to what's going on. Yeah, I talked to Susan about this, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, Susan, but I said that she was looking at this as this very separate, not, not, not together, because they have two different functions. And I think that uh, this uh, community, to me, the Community Advisory Councils is a smaller bite right now, considering uh, the time that we have with the, uh, uh, trying to do the representational uh, vote, like Broderborough has it, too. Mm -hmm. So I would by after talking to her too, I would hate to like lose this window by trying to you know buy too much and at least give a little something to to the communities. That's that's just my feeling, but it doesn't have to be everybody's mm -hmm. feeling. Plus okay. the continuity to the school council uh, concept that probably is not akin to the representative. Does the representative serve all year long, Susan? Yeah, the representatives do serve all year round. So it, there are places where representatives who are elected to the representative town meeting do serve, do create subcommittees. Mm -hmm. I don't think they do in Brattleboro, but there are other places where they do. So it could it could work hand in hand. I mean, I think that you're right, Scott, that it could work hand in hand. Um, I think what you're saying, Floor, is that school councils is an idea that's already been floated in merged districts um, in Vermont. So it's less of a reach, um, it, it, given right now where we are in the Act 46 process, to say, hey, how about school councils? They can be advisory. It's not that big a reach, whereas a representative town meeting is outside the box thinking is in terms of Act 46. So you're thinking maybe something that that's achievable as opposed to something that would be an echo lab. So, yes. Yeah. But if, you were, if you're being Jeffersonian, yeah, absolutely, they go together. <laughs> okay. Well, you and I talked about it a bit on the phone, and I thought that you had said that, you know, because this were the, the, the town meeting represents all of the towns, and these ones are very based on each, on each school. Right, right. Yeah. So it was That's just right. a little yeah. bit. But a representative, in a, re, in a representative town meeting, for example, in Brattleboro, they're divided into four districts, oh, so you're elected okay. from your district. Okay. Um, so you could, I mean, it would be dependent on how you did the wording, but if you did a representative town meeting for WCSU, you could have the, the people represented, representing their towns, you could divide it that way if you wanted to, or yeah. any other subdivisions you wanted. Okay. Yeah. So, I, I, you could bring that up. Yeah, 
The two so sentences? Like with the, the school board may also direct a superintendent to seek input from the school board's council on issues such as, and we bring it up to the day. The last bullet a school board may also direct a superintendent to seek input from a school based council on issues such as principal hiring, school district communications. And that's just a reminder that the, that the board can do that? It doesn't read to me like a like a bylaw. It reads to me like a. Yeah, I, in my mind, I wanted to say that you know the school council should be like, the principal hiring, and, you know, it doesn't have to be all the members, but you know, uh, whoever is in there should be should participate in the, in the school hiring. Are you proposing that you change? Should. I hope not. But I, I, think, uh, my, I, would, I would recommend removing that whole that whole bit. Which whole bit? The, the, all those bullets. And just leave it at the, the top two sentences. I mean, the board has that authority whether we say it or not. Yeah. It's, not yeah. lim it's not limiting yeah. that and authority. It's not granting that authority. It's not putting any condition or comment on that authority. It's okay. just. Yeah, and what, really, truthfully, what I'm trying to do right now is just hold my doornails to like, some achievable yeah. Yeah. article. Yeah. So I am happy to have the first paragraph. Be, as long as we have community advisory councils, yeah. and, so we'll Did, the and this, of course, this doesn't require councils. It says may include. Yeah. But the principle is it calls for local input on policy and budget development, which is hopefully we all agree on. But so should we? This structure should include local school councils. Can that be a compromise for not including the last four bullets? If you're asking me, I w I, I don't want to tie the board's hands and say you must do school councils because we've never done them before. Mm -hmm. I mean that, that's for the board to deliberate ex and maybe experiment with, and then come to a you know a reasoned decision. If we if we mandate them, it could be a colossal failure. And in this community, we want them to just vote this article down. You know, that what we were still in, in the context of the community having options to vote yes or no. And if the community didn't want it, they could just say, you know, yeah. this can make it. If they can make heads or tails of what they're voting on, yeah. If they can make heads or tails okay. of what they're so, voting on. So, so far, we just have. I'm just saying again, like, I. Two yeah. articles. You know? <laughs> so far, we just have two articles. That's so what you said about okay. any election. Any election at all? I, I think that the way this one is going to be structured is going to be orders of magnitude more confusing than anything I've ever seen on a ballot. So, so I think that right now we, we're having a discussion. Yeah. We're not the actual 49 committee. I, I, I hear you. I took all the notes. I'll go through Holly's notes. And then on January 7th, when we're all together, we will make the final decision on this okay. article. So that we can, I, I really want to get through the whole, we don't have that much more to go. So, so I'm but, but I'm, I am prioritizing this one as, as something we will discuss on the set. So I'm not taking it off. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. article, uh, this is one of. Yeah, well, maybe I'll read this one. The new union board should have um, one non-voting member representative of the elementary licensed teaching staff, one non-voting member representative from the licensed high school teaching staff, and one non-voting representative of the remainder of the individuals who staff the union high school and the elementary school building facilities. These non-voting members shall be recused from any information or discussion regarding personnel contract negotiations of any kind. So the purpose of this article um, is to broaden the back base and the source of factual information for the board. Um, because we have um, the representatives from teaching staff from the elementary schools, the high school, 
and the facility folks who work there, um, you can get a lot more information um, about how the system is operating. Than, and, and they're non voting, so they're really it's an informational position, not a voting position. It's not unlike a student representative, which has been part of the U32 board for many, many years without difficulty, I'm assuming. That's a real positive. And positive. Did, so, did you <laughs> consider the, a, a student representative? I would be happy to have a student representative as well. Uh, you know, probably just from U32 because I don't see elementary kids. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's school had, a little late for them. Yeah. Right. And we had um, talked about that, but I thought, Bill, you had said that there was no restriction. There's no restriction. Had, statute so already allows it. Allows the, so we decided that. There's no that. discretion according to statute. This. No. No. Student. Uh, students. So I, I, I have a real, real problem with this one, so I apologize. But this is the first time we've had a chance to discuss it, because we didn't get to it in our last meeting. Um, the feelings are very strong. The reasons may be very subtle, um, and therefore difficult to describe. But I, I think it's a mistake to um, provide um, staff equivalents uh, on a board of directors as, a, as an issue of governance. Um, a board hires a chief of executive uh, to run the school and directs the chief ex executive, possibly sets policy, requires information of the chief executive, could direct the chief executive to engage with the staff and report back to the board on specific questions. Um, I think that it's a confusion of lines of authority and accountability. Um, I think it undermines uh, the ability of uh, the authority of a chief executive and the, the ability to do the job we've hired them to do. Um, and it just seems to me like sort of turning on his head, you know, the the idea of what a board is and what governance is. Um, so. I've never, I've worked for, I've served many boards. I've never, a board may always invite in re or request or require uh, different staff members to attend to provide reports or to sit in on certain discussions or um, as a matter of courtesy even. Um, but I have never seen a board that um, outside of the chief executive um, has, you know, defined membership for, you know, different levels of staff. Um, where they can come to any meeting, they're invited, they get the minutes, the invitations, they sit at the table, they're you know, sort of equal participants in the discussion, of, of all discussions, I've just never seen that, and I think for good reason. Um, so this one really sets me on edge, I guess. Um, yeah, that's my, my take on it. Dorothy? Oh, sorry, Scott. Thanks. Um, that's, uh, I think, um, very well expressed, and a very American point of view. And that may be the most appropriate for us, since that's who we are. But I should just you know, point out um, that it's uh, completely consistent with other practices of corporate governance, such as in Germany, where labor has you know, a, an important place at the board table. And um, it seems to work very well. And even though it, it may not be in our, <coughs> you know, our, our habit or our custom to do that, um, I don't think there's any sort of um, any reason a priori that it that it can't work. And and I I can I can sort of um, I don't know I, I can I can see the potential advantages of it in terms of just communication and a sense of Solidarity all around, and the demystification of what the board and um, executives are up to. I mean, I don't think I would object to it um, as a a matter of board discretion. You know, I can see that there would be some advantages to extending invitations to staff to participate regularly, and certainly in certain kinds of discussion, I would imagine their staff would be more than happy to avoid other parts of. <laughs> what the board does, um, but so this, this, do, this doesn't <laughs> this doesn't leave it up to the board's discretion. This is a you shall. There will be, um, and it, it sets it, you know, for all time until 
uh, unless you know some, if somebody puts a board with the electorate to, to change it, that uh, at every single discussion, barring you know negotiating uh, regarding personal personnel contract negotiations, which by the way shouldn't be the only thing that I think staff would be uh, recused from discussing. There's executive session. There's you know there's lots of things that may come up that would be inappropriate for uh, staff or personnel to participate in. So it's both it's it's that, but it's 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 primarily, um, I guess what I'm saying is I don't object to what you're saying in principle, but I do think it should be a matter of board discretion, and this does not leave it to board discretion. Mm -hmm. I, I like it. I think it's important to have people who are involved in, in the school or whatever it is we're talking about to actually be there and hear what's going on. And, and yes, we can say <coughs> you come to the meetings and, and then report to other people. But again, it's very different when you are actually a member of the board. The same person comes on a regular basis and gets the regular feel of it all, not just a one-time shot. I, I remember when I first was involved in education. I was a half-time aide at East Montpelier. And I was, when I became a full-time aide the next year, I was amazed at how much I had been missing as a half-time person. It, it just, it, it just is not the same. And by, by having a specified person be part of the board, that same person is getting all of the information, not just a little bit here and a little bit there, as if you would have them come and be members of the audience. So I support it. Um, so I, um, I work for the Cooperative Council Board of Directors, and we have a, a non-voting staff representative. So I've, I've worked for 15 boards, probably a dozen different staff representatives. And um, I, I, I understand the um, desire to include, and offer a seat at the table, um, because the folks that work for us are one of our key constituencies. Mm -hmm. um, but I think we should really think carefully about there are some potential drawbacks, especially when we're talking about three seats on a, on a 10 or 13 person board. Um, it, it is a very difficult role for these people to, to judge because their interaction with the system is as an employee, and we're asking them to operate at a policy level, which is very difficult to do. Now, it's not impossible, but, but I see people struggle with that. At the same time, you're inviting, you're basically inviting the board into the, into the weeds of operations by having these folks and, and you know, the questions you're asking them are going to be operational in nature, and it, it's going to, it tends to take the board's eye off the ball to some extent. Now, of course, anyone who, a staff member who lives in the district can run and be elected, right? Yeah, and so there, and they're, when they're elected by the, 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 the overall electorate, they have a different responsibility, right? They are, their responsibility is to the system. They must set aside conflicts and recuse themselves and, and put the school system first. When they're elected by <clears throat> the teaching staff or the other staff, other types of staff, what, what, what is their allegiance to? And, and that's not a trivial matter. So I, I think we should really consider that. Um, because again, it, put, it puts the board and that staff person in an a, in a unusual situation and one that's hard to navigate. Okay. Oh, sorry for that. Would staff people be allowed to run for board positions? Uh, uh, if you're a resident yeah. in the state of Vermont, yeah. you can run yeah. for boards right now. And, yeah. and you can still be a teacher. You can yes. serve as a teacher yeah. and yeah. serve as yeah, a teacher. The only thing you can do is negotiations. No, there's nothing even actually saying you can't do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, the only thing that's the there is the conflict of interest. You, you have a legal, once you're elected by the elector, you have a legal duty, duty to loyalty to the system, which means you must put the system ahead of your other interests or recuse yourself from those decisions. 
And with a non-voting member, it's, it's blurrier, I believe. And I will add to that that I, I, I'm a little worried of what this would do to the principal's morale. I would rather, you know, I, the principal's already invited. I feel like the, the staff is invited to come anytime, too. But if we are putting all our, you know, the, the principals are the ones that are the CEOs of each particular school. So if, uh, you know, if whoever is elected for that board happens to, you know, I don't know, be not having a good relationship with whatever that principal is, and it's not really representing the, the needs of that particular school or the board as a, as a whole, it's very, it, it's different to what we do, more separate. I think that if there's any, that those issues should go to the principal first always, and then if the board, the, the teachers still feel like they want to come to a board meeting. They're always invited, right? I, I don't know, I'm making it more confusing, but I just feel like, if, if anything, I'm hoping that those principals are going to still be attending the, the board meetings of, uh, of this full board, board meeting. All of them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that, that, do, that would do you, be... Uh, do you really believe that all the principals will be attending the board meetings? Well, not, maybe not all of them, but like just like when we have a full board meeting right now and the whole leadership team is together, that's going to be key to be able to have a culture of sharing resources, right? How else are we going to do it? So I, I don't think that, the, not that the licensed staff is less than the principals, but it's, it, 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 I think it just makes it a little uh, murky right, right now because I think they're always invited. Well, the teachers, the teachers so. are always invited, and we, you know, and like we have, you know, sort of broken protocol sometimes at our school to invite them to like come and say exactly what they're doing. You know, like how does the, the interventions are working? How do you serve your kids? How many kids do you serve? What are you actually are doing to inform and educate us as uh, as board members? And so, what um, this uh, membership would do, I think, is provide real facts on the ground facts of how staff members really work and how the system impacts them because we really don't hear that much um, and um, I think the folks who are actually doing the work in the trenches are the ones who are best able to inform board members um, about, about But what, what prohibits is the board to asking for? What? what pro there, is there anything that prohibits the board for asking? I'm going to give Darcy a chance no, to talk. No, we prohibit the board from asking if, if they decide to ask. Um, but I tend to think that, you know, given the um, policy governance bent uh, model that I think we may be trending toward, the board will not be asking those questions, and the board will not be interested in that information, they'll be interested in results, uh, which is where I think the policy government, governance model really supports is <coughs> We set goals, the board sets goals, and the CEO um, uh, delivers those goals. Um, there's, there's, I think the board has the opportunity to say, you can uh, achieve those goals, but you can't do this, this, or this. We have to be pretty specific about the do nots. Otherwise, it's you know free range. Uh, and so I think with the uh, representatives from you know, a lot of our constituents, um, you would get information, more direct information, which would help you inform board policy um, and action um, and the actions that they take. It would also, I think, lead to a melding of shared interests as opposed to um, segregating interests um, into board, um, teaching staff, um, administration uh, by having this overlapping of, of uh, membership on the board and working together, breaking bread together. And you get to know folks um, better by the constants of presence and um, meeting over time. That's, that's how you get to know people better. Um, and we give um, real proof to our claim of transparency in a lot of what we do. Because I think we would use the word transparency on a pretty regular basis without being very transparent at all. So I think that that would help just open up <coughs> our process. Um, you know, there are potential conflicts of interest, but there are board members as well. And I think we would um, trust the integrity of these representatives who um, would recuse themselves if, there, if there's a conflict, just like we trust two other board members uh, to recuse themselves if there's a conflict. I don't think we would expect any less of them than we do of ourselves. Um, so, you know, I think there's a, a, a great opportunity with this new entity uh, to behave in a different way. 
and I think it would be benefit, beneficial to us all. And, and if it didn't work out, you could change it because they're not voting members. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're not to worry about the block of three. So, well, how would you change? You'd have to change the article. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. I guess I was surprised by your comment that you didn't, or my assumption that you meant that you didn't think the principals would go to the board meetings because my assumption is. What? I said I was a little surprised by your comment that well, you didn't. You know, it's, it's based on the experience of uh, at the the school in Dan Ryan, we said, and this is going back a long time, he moved to the school district in Essex, and none of the principals went to board meetings. It was the superintendent who represented the administration, and they weren't invited, and they didn't go. Um, so, I, plus, it's, I, you know, you're talking about five different elementary school principals coming to the board meetings twice, probably twice a month, I suspect it would be. I'm really, really surprised that they show up on a regular basis. Yeah. And yeah, the second, the, 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 sorry, it, Rick, do you mind closing the door? There seems to be a lot going on. Thank you. Uh, the other thing I was going to say is, um, obviously, the U32 member would have kind of the, have the opportunity to feel get the feeling of most of the staff around here. But how would a single member from one of the schools get the feel for all five elementary schools with? I think by talking to their colleagues, um, they, they have enough um, in terms of curriculum meetings and things like that. And that change, it, it would be work. Um, I think it's at least an opportunity for some representation. Because I'm going to give Matt and Pat one more comment. Yeah, I mean, I feel like it creates a board that is explicitly too involved in the in the operational weeds of the school system. Um, and I guess just a, a sort of hypothetical example, you know, it's sometimes the job of the chief of executive to implement policies or practices that are unpopular. Um, you know, and popularity is not necessarily the best indicator of the quality of the, the initiative or the practice. It's just a challenge that executives face and that they have to they have to deal with. Um, now, teachers can come to the a board the board anytime to express dissatisfaction or to appeal the decision of uh, to, to publicly sort of you know object to um, you know something that's happening. Um, but it's an, it's it's really different when the when, when they're invited to sit at the table for every conversation and to weigh in on everything and to be, to be just um, casually asked you know, questions about any topic that might come up, then if, they, then if they have to make the decision actually to say, like, this is important enough for me to come to the board. You know, I've, I've tried to work with my boss as much as possible to express why I think this is a problem. Um, it's not getting addressed. Now it's time for me to appeal that decision to you know the, the next level up. Um, those are entirely different, you know, dynamics. Um, and so I, I think that you know it, it does feel like enshrining in the articles themselves or the bylaws of the organization that we're going to have a board that's going to be have its fingers deep into the, the details and sort of operation of the schools. And it's just not something that I really feel is appropriate to the function of a board. Um, so that's my... Chris Winters, just go I think it's a good idea. I think they bring a valuable perspective. I'm a little concerned that three is a large large number. Um, but they are non-voting members. I think that's appropriate. I'd be in favor of the article. Um, well, I'm going to go I also think that there are times when you're listening to what's going on and something's being planned that they may be able to bring up or what they see as unintended consequences as a, as a result of what the board is doing. And, and I think that's important too. It, it's really tough if a board works really, really hard on something and then they realize after the fact that there was something they didn't consider and now they have to go back and rework it. I, I, I really see it as more eyes um, and more brains um, on, the, on the board and improvement. And I think you meant that this is where we each uh, quote Jeff Goldblum again, only in opposite directions. <laughs>
<laughs> Other than um, Germany, do we have any examples, positive examples of this working? Well, again, you said you had. Uh, I, I, I think it. I think it's mixed. Okay. I, I have strong concerns about three. Okay. I have no idea what that dynamic's like. Then what? What that, that dynamic That's is like. Okay. Did, in your situation, did the staff member add valuable information that management may not know about? It, it can happen, yeah. yeah. I mean, like I said, there's, there's a wide variety of um, people's ability to do this role. People, people tend to last one year because it's so difficult. Um, it's, it's just really challenging. And, um, um, you know, really, what I think it's intended to do is provide another voice. Like you said, you know, you, the board is focused on results, and not, and there's certain limitations that this this person is there to call out where things might not be, you know, what, as the board is expecting that they were done or something like that. But uh, I, don't know, I, you know, I, I I think this is this is this is a huge topic that requires a lot of discussion and to put this in front of uh, the electorate without enough deliberation I think is is really uh, problematic you asked for examples of where this works um, Scott was right you talked about Germany you could talk about South Africa you could talk about Australia you could talk about parts of uh, Canada and some of the public participation work in which I've researched in my doctoral work uh, You've all touched on pieces that are found in that research. Uh, the research has found that governance, if, if done wrong, it can really explode on you. Um, if done right, it can bring a lot of collaboration. And I probably should have said the positive first, so I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, second, the second thing I would say is that it's also research that puts a high stress load on the employee that's actually there. A extreme amount, and I would say that while we had ups and downs with our labor management councils here, right now we're working pretty well. When things come in, we work on Do these tend to be non-voting seats that you're describing? Uh, I've seen both when my research, because most of the work on the public participation or employee participation in, um, in governance is outside the US, and there's different roles of Voting and non-voting. Um, so I mean, uh, that that's one yeah. dynamic that I, I think for some folks it feels like a second class board exactly. yeah. member. Yeah. So. I give you what I can. I, mm -hmm. and I without trying to really give you push either way, but just say that's what I've seen in my work of the public participation. Mm -hmm. So where do we leave this one? Did we have Any further discussion at uh, on the seventh. This might, I mean, since I don't have enough support. I'm gonna. I'm just gonna move the the budget. The since uh, Susan is here, the budget shall be approved using a deliberative representative. Representative mm -hmm. town meeting model. That I don't. I don't want to reduce that conversation too much. So can we look at the two last ones, which I think will not take the two last ones won't take very much yes. okay. uh, time at all. So do you mind reading those two? Because um, they're um, kind of the same. The, so just the third paragraph says if the competent judicial authority concludes that any of these articles are illegal for any reason, then that article or part thereof shall be nullified. The remaining articles or part thereof shall be deemed severable from the nullified article or section of an article and shall remain in full force and effect. And what that basically is saying is that if there's a challenge to the article and the court says, oh, we think this article is invalid, it doesn't in invalidate the entirety of the articles, it just invalidates that section that is found um, not to be a legal provision. But so I'm a little confused in, in, in that one. I kept reading it over and over again to try to make sense of it. So if we are giving our articles to our lawyer to make sure that they're legal, 
that in, in theory this shouldn't be happening and the more important would be the last one, the last article. The, are prepared just because they're forcing up. I, 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 I don't know. Are we doubting that the, that the okay, lawyer so, is doing so this? So the Supreme work? Court has five members, and a lot of times the decisions are three to two or four to one. Um, so you can have judges um, who are lawyers can have different opinions on what a statute means. I mean, the U.S. Supreme Court is five to four a lot and a lot of controversial issues. So it just, you know, our lawyers. Um, and not challenging their competence or ability to review these, um, but they can be wrong. And, and if it does, if, if for some reason the articles were challenged, this is just a preservation uh, clause, which basically says, if for any reason any of the articles or part of the article is deemed illegal, it doesn't in, you know, infect the entirety of the article, just that part will be put aside. It's often contained in contracts, um, that if any clause is found uh, illegal, then you know the balance of the contract and the terms of the contract uh, continue. Yeah, I, I just think it's confusing to put it out there. So I don't, I, I, I don't, I don't. So I go with you guys are the lawyers. So <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty nondescript. Nondescript. In, in a okay. In a, so. Did uh, Chris Leopold comment on this one? No, he hasn't seen it. He hasn't seen any of these on this page. Oh, he hasn't? No. He has, I mean, he's seen the one on the budgets, but because you had asked from the last time that we were together for that to go to him. These other three have not. Okay. So we'll review that one with Chris before Monday. Ask, ask another attorney named Chris. Our own division, maybe. It's <laughs> just to prove the point. Um, so the last one is: uh, these articles are prepared due to the state board's order forcing merger of Washington Central Supervisory Union member towns. By voting on these articles, the voters in the member towns are not waiving any rights to challenge the legality of the state board's forced merger order. Um, period, all rights are reserved. And that is basically uh, language to say we're doing this because we have to do it um, and it's not relinquishing like any challenge to the um, legality of the, of the state board's order. Um, so, that it's not a thing. so it's not deemed to be a voluntary action for voluntary merger. That's all that does. Basically, eliminate the argument oh, you've already merged, you can't yeah, challenge this. Right. I'm fine with that, considering that we have four boards that have joined a lawsuit, I think right. it would be not fair to not say yes to this. It's pretty simple. <coughs> well, still run it by a loophole. Yeah, we yeah. still run it by a loophole. Okay, so, uh, Susan, you're on. So, or you can read it. Chris wrote it, but we don't have, uh, we did send this to Chris. Uh, the book, and he did a little bit of research, but hadn't finished by this afternoon. So we're expecting more for him I'm by expecting Monday. Expecting a letter by Monday. By Monday. On this, there's quite a few issues with it. <laughs> and it's, it's um, I I want to say I'm gonna I'm gonna give you a little information. I from last um, first of all I'm gonna say don't kill the messenger. <laughs> Please don't. You want to phone this in, though? <laughs> <laughs> I feel like I need to walk no, out right now. And, so here's the thing. and Susan and I have talked about this. <clears throat> I, I'm in total agreement with the sentiment because of the public participation stuff that I know that I'm researching. I'm wrong statute is not. So Chris is writing you an opinion based on the legality of being able to do this through Vermont statute. Even though the state board gave the authority to a municipal board to present to the voters an article like this um, to look at part representation or budget voting. Um, but it wasn't done, it was done in Title 17, and I could get out more of the pieces. That's why I want him to write, write you a letter. You because I know for for a couple people around this board, you want to see the legal his legal opinion. And as Chris, you've always advised me, is get the lawyer to put it in writing. Yeah. So he's doing that. Yeah. Um, 
the E boat. So, um, while I believe the sentiment is really, this is a good sentiment to get people to participate in the process, um, I think that's great. The piece that is who has the authority to actually recommend this to the voters, and Chris's read is it's the municipal board, and you don't have that municipal board. Who's the board. municipal body? Body. Body, body. not the municipal board. The, the municipal, municipal body. body. And the body, and the body is the new board once they're seated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you are not that. Not that it can happen, it just can't happen right now. So what I understood from our conversation with Bill today was after he had hang up the phone with him is that, you know, establishing who is the municipal body. So it doesn't mean that we can't do it, but once we are seated, we can bring it up. As, you know, we would be the municipal body because the town, uh, that the town meeting voting makes us a municipal body. And Chris, and Chris so is, no and he sought counsel from other lawyers at municipal and school. Um, so he's been doing some work since you were at our last meeting. Talked to him about. It. So he's been really trying to. And he found this. He knows where the statute is that you talked about from Title 17 in the election law. And actually talked to the Secretary of State's office today about it as well. So, so I don't know. Organizationally. Um, <coughs> there is, there is in the warning of the and after I was scrambling for it, it was right here in my head, or I put it somewhere right around here. Um, there's Article Four, which is determines the date and location of the first annual meeting for the district and all their subsequent annual meetings, which shall be not earlier than February first and no later than June first of each year. Five is determine whether to vote on the district's budget and all their public questions by Australian ballot. Six is to determine whether to elect members of the district board by Australian ballot. And, and if, if the vote was not to vote by Australian ballot, you'd be, be you'd be going to a full district meeting. Okay, so you can't go to the representational. You either have one or the other right now. Mm -hmm. You can get to that representational body. But you need the board. You need the new board seated to do it. You need them in place. They have to be the ones to recommend an article, a vote uh, to uh, to have a call for an election to do what Susan's mm -hmm. suggesting. So then this could take the medical of a recommendation to the new board. It could take a recommendation. It could not take. It couldn't. You could not no. vote on it in mm -hmm. the articles on the 19th. You've got to get that board in place. Mm -hmm. That's the crib notes. Chris will give you all the pieces in between. Matthew? Yeah, I just wanted to say that I, I called the chair of the Brattleboro School Board today because I had some questions about this. Um, and, you know, she was great. Um, she, she said it's a, she called the model goofy but good. Yeah. <laughs> what? She said goofy but good. Um, <laughs> You know, she said some of the pros are kind of what Bill's already said, which is that it really does, you know, that sort of character of Vermont Town Meeting that we cherish of that people can come and kind of have their say, or if they want to get involved, they can influence the process. You know, she said it's awesome to see. Um, she did say, you know, it has some, some, some things that people could describe as drawbacks. I guess they do their town and school board meetings at the same day. Mm -hmm. So they start at 8.30 in the morning, and she said they typically don't end until 8 or 9 o'clock at night, like it's that long of a meeting. Um, she said it can have a kind of delaying effect on decision making because, you know, uh, people agitate, or there's, there's 130 representatives there in Brattleboro, capped at 140. She said they usually have about 130. So that kind of, it's just a lot of conversation and a lot of chances for people to raise sort of questions and issues, and that's, you know, that's democracy. Um, and then um, the other thing she said was they have a real problem actually getting people to run and serve. So like they sometimes have people caucusing in. But anyway, so I, the, upshot, the upshot is that I, I'm actually kind of inclined to support this, but I also have problems with doing it now because I, not for the statutory reasons, although I'm interested to learn about that, but because I feel like it's introducing an entirely new electoral process. And again, I just don't feel like we have the time to really share, educate, and engage people's questions about that. So it feels, I, it feels, I feel queasy about trying to put in place a, through this 
effort, an entirely new electoral process, with what I imagine will be a fairly low turnout on a on a random Tuesday in February mm -hmm. um, for people to vote on this. Um, you know, so that's my two cents on it. Peter? I saw you nodding, so I don't know if you had something to say about I've it. I've been nodding quite a while. That was just like, say something. <laughs> I, yes. I basically had the same thoughts of Matthew. I think I wouldn't. I, I'd like to learn more about it, um, but I would. I would, in an on, already convoluted time frame. I feel like it just adds a little bit of convolution to the process that I wouldn't want to right now. Yeah, but they said. I, I'm, I'm interested. Um, I didn't get a chance to talk to Will today. He said he talked to Chris Leopold about this. I didn't. Yeah. I wasn't. I wasn't aware of the, some of the legal constraints of who can actually put this into place. Will was the one that actually really helped us dig down the law where it was. What Chris said. Okay. Will was very helpful. But it was Will at first like, no, I don't think that can happen. Yeah. So I definitely yeah. put this in a, in the category of something to keep on the on the back burner and make a recommendation to okay. look at. Yeah. 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 Well, can I tell you what I was nodding about most recently? Yes. Um, uh, the difficulty in finding an opportunity to talk with the voters um, concerns me greatly because yeah. it's not just the timeline, it's, it's the, the opportunity to talk to many people about what it is that this committee has been doing and I'm trying to catch up on. Mm -hmm. um, I, I still think that some of these Articles should go forward mm -hmm. if possible, uh, followed by some recommendations. Uh, but it becomes incumbent upon probably this group to mm -hmm. to talk to as many people as possible and and uh, and and help them understand to the extent that any of us understand uh, what it is we're proposing. I'll continue to shake my head. <laughs> okay, thank you. Well, that's great. I just wanted to make sure that we were you. getting your input too. Yeah. So, you know, I, I, I like this. I like what it does. As far as my opinion, you sort of know my opinion. I, I, I was, uh, you know, I, I think it's too much to, but right now it's something that I'm definitely interested. I was happy to hear that one that we would be the municipal body then and we can reconsider. I know the sentiment from East Montpelier because I, I fought very hard to keep town meeting at East Montpelier and I know the you know, petition after petition that came out for Australian ballot and you know, the big meeting that we ended up having at U32. So I, I sort of know that. So I know that this is something that we definitely need to put out to the voters in, uh, you know, that might not share that, that sentiment that we have, that they felt very opposed to keeping that town meeting that they felt like they were disenfranchised from the process and there were just a few people that, to know of town always making decisions. So, so yes, but I, it's something that is worth looking as a recommendation or as a, you know, something that, that this board can take later, maybe not a recommendation, but that the board can take later. Is that what we were all agreeing on? So it won't, be a, it won't be an article. Right. Yeah, it can be. Yeah. It sounds like there's a legal opinion. Yeah. Chris's opinion, yeah. 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 So, He's trying to okay. define who is a municipal body, yeah. and he said, I have a hard time finding either the transition board or the articles of agreement committee as a municipal body. Okay. Yeah, and I'm so, very much so, in favor of keeping Vermont character as, as it had been before, but, you know, Take this up as a, once we are a municipal body of representative by the council. Unless you have something else. Yeah, no, I was just, uh, I, I, thanks for that. And I was really under no illusions that, that this was the kind of thing that, uh, given the time frame and, and all of that, that this was going to be like, yay, let's do something <laughs> completely different. Um, but um, I think transition points are the time when structural changes um, can happen. and, and so keeping this alive um, early on in that discussion, I think, would be really valuable. And in particular, when um, 
uh, when you're talking about a five-town population, I mean, that's what a representative town meeting is intended to do, is to look at a larger, I mean, we're talking about five towns. Um, that's when it's, it's very it's very different from the argument of, should we be going to town meeting or a strong ballot? Mm -hmm. This is a, 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 high, a hybrid process. So the discussions about why to switch away from town meeting and to a strong ballot become a very different discussion when you're talking about a representative what they're doing is giving the, the legislative body, the body that is deciding yes or no on the budget, more than a two-word vocabulary. <laughs> it's not just yes or no. It yeah. allows them to discuss them. And I don't think that the results that would come out of a representative town meeting would necessarily be different in terms of policy and in terms of passing budgets. My guess is that they would be pretty similar based on the Brownsboro um, experience and the experience that I've seen in Switzerland as well. Um, and in other towns in New England. What I do think is different, not so much as the outcome, is the culture and the um, uh, trust and social capital that come out of having um, a deliberative body that is a regular body. So that would be right. Do you have any idea how many representatives we would have? I mean, that, that would be up to, to the group. So the, the, 60, the 65, 65 is... 65, you get to 150. Yeah, yeah, that, that sounds about right. Census. Brattleboro has, um, it says in their time, um, their violence, that they have a maximum of 140 plus. Um, they have ex officio members, meaning the school board, the select board are automatic, the moderators are automatic members. Um, so the idea is to have um, a, a ratio. Um, so every once in a while, every 10 or 20 years, they go in and, and um, check to make sure that the ratio is in. Yeah, and exactly because of what you just said, it would be really important to bring that knowledge to the towns, you know, so that they understand that, you know, that social capital that we would be building as a, as a community instead of just voting right now yes or no on something that they don't particularly understand. And they're just feeling like, oh, I'm giving away my Australian ballot without understanding those other Ramifications. Yeah. The, fact that they, the fact that they have recourse any time they, they don't like what the, the town meeting did, they have easy recourse to act. That was really good to know, to too. That in. But um, I would just, just to have this visual in your mind, um, when we discussed this with the legislature 10 years ago, when they changed it to make representative town meeting easier for towns to adopt, um, one of the really valuable processes was just to bring in a handbook um, by Skype. And it's just what Matthew just did, except he was talking to school board members. Just say, how does it work? What, you know, yeah. what are the pluses, what are the minuses? Um, and um, just, you know, what, what, what's it like? Um, and the, the, the conversation that you had sounds very much in keeping like the one that I've had over the years for the temporary follow. She, she didn't say it was super hard to get people to run. She said it was, all, they all, they're always some NPCs that they need to recruit for. Which, what to me, that says is there's always the availability to be young and represent. She said they could caucus too, like at the meeting to appoint people. So it was, I didn't delve into that. But it seemed like they were So the last. So now that we have gone through sort of prioritizing the the amendments, I promised that we would come back to the January 9th. Can, can I just ask one question real yes. quick? Because we still haven't talked about Article 4. School, mm -hmm. school closure. Oh, sure. we, I Do, thought that we have we, a plan for talking about that? Or? We were not going to, well, I would let Chris talk about this. this week. Is it the warrant coming to? When you and I talked, yeah. uh, and we were trying to prioritize what we would do at this meeting, when we were tasked with deciding how to structure this, this meeting, we understood that to do Article 4 in, in school closures, we didn't want to have to do something that wouldn't, don't, that wouldn't allow us to vote this the, as a slate, and that we were going to focus on the amendments, yeah. and that we were already protected by those two years. Yeah. So, that, so you can add to that. Yeah, so I, I think we talked about just leaving it as it is and not, just because we are deadlocked mm -hmm. um, on, on amending that. And amending it would be problematic in terms of presenting it. Um, so and it gives, gives us two years to, to do it. Um, but it's, I, I, I would suggest that we do have a discussion about it as a full committee member if we mm -hmm. prefer on, on Monday night. 
um, just because it is a pretty significant issue uh, yes. that was not resolved. And, and I didn't want to put it on the amendments because I didn't want it to feel like there was one article more that we needed to prioritize. But unless you guys feel differently. Okay. I seem wise. <laughs> Can I ask, how, how are these articles going to be presented? So, so we pick two, will there only be two that so will be put before is, the voters, or is it a combination very, with the We've been told default. pretty um, directly from the agency that if you look at Article 14, which is the last article of the agreements, there are different ways in which they need to be voted. So one of the reasons we were talking about school closure is that some of the articles can be amended by a co-mingled ballot. It's where you look at, you have Article 14A1, which is the ones that can't be amended at all. Article 14A2, which is the following articles can be made, amended by a majority of the voters of the new union district. So that means across all co-mingled ballots. And then if you get into three, which is where the school closure one is, you have to have a separate ballot and a separate warning. That would be counting ballots in each town to make sure it passes in each town. So by staying in one area, per se, let's just say, in the only picking areas that, and any additional articles that don't affect the articles that were handed to us from AOE, so I gotta pick one that we just had that, um, the one on the new union board will have one non-voting member, blah, blah, blah. That, I would want to check with Chris Leopold that that's not changing the structure and doesn't get into Article 10. And if that didn't, then it could, we could do that with a co-mingled ballot of all five towns. Because what has been uh, the Article A 14A, Four, the substance of following articles can be amended by the board. That's the board one. There's an, I thought there was another one here that isn't. So okay. from but. the way I understood it from Bill and from Chris, and I might be wrong, and from uh, Donna, was that if we were not changing the substance, it's, it's especially that one that we discussed today with Matthew about adding a board member, we changed the date. We can't present these articles as a slate and then have... Actually, these, if, if you're not changing anything within this. within an article, you don't have to present that to the voters. Okay, so you we will present this at our hearing. At our hearing and say, these are, the, you know, these are the ones we're adjusting. So those are the ones, and then what we've been told is on the ballot, the mm -hmm. full article has to appear on the ballot. Only the ones that are being changed. Yeah. The only the ones the that are ones being, that being changed. And, you sh and it's highly recommended by Chris Leopold, unless you want it, if you do it as a slate, yeah. you either lose them all or get them all, or do it, he suggests, he highly recommends that you do them one individual, one. one on one, so you vote each one. So, uh, it, so it seems like for Article 4, Closure beyond the initial two year period uh, would be done by the district as a whole. If we're going to change that. Where are you? Under Article, Article 4? 14, 14 uh, A sub 2 sub B. It says Article 4, paragraph B, building closure requires approval by voters of district in 2000, uh, 2001, 2002, and beyond, and in all years beyond, that would be by the district as a whole. Mm -hmm. yep. Whereas the yeah. individual right. school closure within the first two years right. would require each school, right. each town to right. say yes. And this is, this is the real key. I mean, this Article 14 <coughs> is the key for how the voting happens. Okay. Yeah. So what we were trying to do is avoid that complication. Well, the complication of each town. Of having, yeah, because when I talked with the yeah. town, the town clerks, they were like, if they were. Well, but that, I that is only for the first I don't believe that's period. the issue. Isn't the issue that if we try to propose a change to Article 4B, it would be part of the slate? Mm -hmm. And if they got, that got voted down, then well, so the, where are we? You know, so here's the, you, as an articles committee, have a, the, I'm just going to consider whatever the committee we're going to be that's going to, that may adopt something. 
you can either do the whole slate of amendments that you want to do. So either they all go up and down once. Yeah. Or, as Chris has been strongly suggesting to all his clients, and, um, and I haven't heard anyone saying something different, it is highly suggested each amendment is voted upon. And so if you've got four different amendments that you've, four different articles that you've amended, yeah. or one, three that are amended and one that's new, yeah. you do each of those individually and not the whole slate. Okay. Because you have more like, I think the thinking is, and I've heard it, but I've just plain forgotten it, is that you have more like the hood of not having one article take down the other three. Yeah. So as it is right now, we have four new articles and two that we're going to talk again about. So we would be voting. So in essence, we have 18. You don't vote. No, we, don't have, we just have four. Sorry, we just have four. four. Yeah. That, that's the thing. These are, whole, these are already in place by, yeah. state, stat, right. by state board decree. Okay. So can we on Monday should talk about Article 4. Because we're talking about Article 4B. And that's not, and it's not a change that would require each town to vote separately and permittable. Um, because 4B is uh, a vote by the entire, the entire district. That's what we're talking about. Beyond the first two years, it's, it's what our discussion was around and how that could happen. Right? Mm -hmm. I, I think you're reading it. I just got yeah, to read myself to make sure I'm. Yeah, I think you're in the right place. Yeah, I mean, the way I look at this under 14A2, B, right. Article 4, Paragraph B, buildings require, building closure requires approval of voters of district in 2021, 22, and all years after. So that's after the two years. Right. And that's why, in, in contrast, is with 3B, and the voter mechanism is different. Yep. 3D is the first two years. Yep. Because it requires approval of the town. Well, it just actually requires of each town. Of each town. Including, each, including the grade. So. Okay, so as long as that means that we can just bring that one up. So I just want to ask Chris, well, again, because I was confused, but this. I think we can just bring that one okay. it's a big with that one amendment. And if, it's, if, if the amendment's voted down, then the article has the default goes into it back. That's correct. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to add that. And then it, last to not, so we are going to have a meeting on Monday at Berlin. So. I'll be there. I'm, just, <laughs> I'm not sure I can participate on Monday evening because of a work commitment. So. Okay. I definitely cannot. I'm not available. Um, what does Tuesday look like? Let's look at the other list of meetings from Bill before we say. The only day without a meeting so far. <laughs> <laughs> well, we didn't fill that hole in your calendar, Chris. <laughs> That's Romney School Board meeting? That's on Thursday. Yes, it's the 10th. Oh, sorry. So, oh, the 8th, there's nothing there. There's nothing on the 8th. Do you have something, Bill, that we're not seeing? I do not give up Tuesdays. Oh, that's true. That's right. You can have a meeting. That's right. I knew there was a reason I just couldn't <coughs> Chris, do you think on Monday we could stipulate a one hour meeting? At this so, so 5 30 to 6 30? I, I think so. I mean, if you say so, it'll be. Well, it, I, don't know that it'll, I don't know that it'll help people who can't make yeah, it on all, Monday. But. Yeah, what time is your meeting, Carrie? All night? Probably. Yeah, it's going until at least 8 30. Yeah. It allows more time for discussion. I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> I have a question on Article 6. Is this an appropriate time for me to ask for uh, clarification in Article 6? Uh, being the new kid on the block, I don't understand um, 
B, uh, Article 6, B, and C. Let's go in there just a minute. I just want to have, like finish because we're considering the time and I want everybody to be out of here, so I'll get there, I promise. I just want to finish this small discussion right now to be able to make sure that we don't have the schedule. We, we had talked briefly before about this January 7th meeting, so uh, I know some of the other members of the F49 uh, committee can come on, on the 7th. So I'm, I'm trying to decide what, you know, and I, you know, it's either we do it in the 7th without both of you. I mean, I can or do, we it, do it on I, the 8th. I can do it until, bill. until 6.30 on Monday. But, uh, but, but they my, have a meeting schedule yeah, I understand. at 5.30. So, and your board members, some of your board members have something before. So that has something yeah. at 7.30. Well, that, that doesn't matter. I just, that will be done. I can make sure we're done by no later than 7. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but that would be too late for Matthew. Oh, that's too late. Yeah, yeah I, have a, I have an international call at 7. So yeah, yeah, I can't do that. move it. Yeah. You, well, you can't do Monday. Either. I can't I mean, do Monday. I, I mean, I don't expect the group to wait wait for my schedule. There's no time. But the purpose of this meeting would be to finalize our approach for the hearing. So the so fundamental question is, are we going forward with the hearing? Yeah. Have we answered that? I was going to get at that as soon as we could. We can't have a meeting. I, I was, you know, after going through the amendments, I'm feeling like, you know, even if we're just putting four articles to vote, Worth to have the hearing and inform of the you know the draft ones that we were doing anyways and, and have the hearing and the hearing would be informative if to, even if it's you know worth it to go out to vote it doesn't mean that if we have the hearing we have to put the articles to vote because that's not the warning that's one person yeah. Yeah, I tend to but, agree with you, but there, I, I just wanted to say there is a risk that we get feedback uh, at the hearing that we can't effectively deal with. And I don't know how, you know, I don't know the extent of this risk, but I would really hate to, this to be seen as a botched process that just sort of undermines us from the start. Yeah, um, that, that's my concern. So you're... Uh, is, the, is the benefit of these four or five or six amendments worth the risk of, of this, you know, not going well. I'd just like us to consider that. If, if the hearing didn't go well and we thought we couldn't do it, we can at that point say, you know, because of what we've learned and yeah. feedback from the community, uh, we should not go forward. Um, rather than not have the hearing, because it may go well. When you say should not go forward, do you mean with our amendments and just with, accept with all the articles and just, just, just you know, accept the default? default. Mm -hmm. you, know, the default. You, know, I, you know, I think you have to hear a lot of bad things with hearing in order to come to that conclusion. But um, this was, I think, initially to take over uh, eventually. Uh, my concern. Chris Winters? Yeah, I mean, I'm really concerned with the time frame still and the ability to <clears throat> communicate effectively. For us to do a good job on these articles, uh, I, I feel a little bit better after talking them through today, but there, I still have a lot of questions. And I'm questioning myself on whether these articles help or hurt. Um, so I have a lot of trepidation about going forward with these. I, I still think that the new board would make these a priority and I I tend to um, bristle when people tell me just trust the new board to do stuff um, but in this instance I'm saying the same thing um, I would think these articles of agreement would be a priority for our new board um, and that they could take the time to do them right I think that's where I still am Scott um, gosh for the <laughs> um, it's sort of a, a difficult situation. I mean, I consider 
this entire activity to be essentially in service of an unlawful decision. So, um, I mean, I'm not, I, I guess I'm less worried about you, about a botched process than you are, <laughs> because I consider it a lot of that. Um, I, you know, I, I just feel like we should try to do the best job we can to come up with the best, you know, um, the best document that we can so that even if it's messy, um, you can use a, an analogy that Matthew um, used about a year ago. You know, even if we cross the finish line with arms and legs flying in all directions, if there's something that there, um, if whatever facts on the ground are being created, are being created in a manner that is um, at least the least injurious that we can, and, and perhaps even beneficial, then it's worth, it's worth trying for it. Thank you. Peter? I, I think, I think, proceeding can do little harm at this point. Um, I'm inclined to agree that we, we're not all in agreement with the, with the uh, act that got us here in the first place, but um, if, if we can winnow down the articles that we've discussed tonight, um, perhaps separate articles from recommendations, I think there will be some value to that, even if it's uh, in the form of, of uh, hopefully guidance to the, to the interim and the new board. I kind of go along with what Select Scott said. We just we worked hard on it. This is the best we can do. I don't I don't see it's going to make for any new problems. Have you changed your mind, or are you still? No, I mean I, do, I I I think it does create new problems, at least in terms of confusion especially for the public, I mean, and I also share, I mean, I, so, I, so I think, you know, we, we have been put in a very difficult situation by, you know, a difficult process. The question is whether we'll now contribute to that and add to it or take a step back and at least not, you know, sort of exacerbate it. Um, I think that, you know, we've just spent two and a half hours of discussion. We still have three key articles that we haven't decided yet ourselves. We've probably spent I don't know how many hours in committee, let alone the hours we spent outside of our committee meetings talking about it. Um, you know, extremely challenging issues, extremely uh, complicated things on which you know good people can disagree, um, and yet we're sort of proposing to rush it through and get it out to voters, and you know, have almost no time to you know conduct sort of outreach and engagement and discussion of it. Um, so it just seems, uh, unless it's absolutely necessary. If it's absolutely necessary, then we have to do it. I don't look at a lot of these and see absolutely necessary. I see optional. Um, on one or two, I could be persuaded that you know they are. it's necessary that we pay strict attention to those issues. But on some of them, I, I don't see that at all. So um, that's kind of where I'm at with it. Can I have one more comment? Because yeah. I won't be here Monday. Um, <laughs> I feel very differently about the four that we agreed to. Yeah. I don't think they're at all necessary, personally, but I think that they're good ideas, and, and um, I, 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 don't, I don't have a problem with putting those before the voters. But I feel differently about the three that we didn't agree to, particularly non-voting staff members and closure, and to some extent the policy on school choice. Those are big decisions, and we haven't wrestled them to the ground. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm very concerned about putting those before the voters. Darcy? Yeah, I, I agree with most of what these guys have said. I mean, I, I feel a little rushed. Oh, I feel very rushed, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and still coming to turn, like up to speed on some of this. Um, but I also think that it would be good to get a little feedback from the, the voters. and and at least have the opportunity to kind of speak our mind. Mm -hmm. 
So, because my concern is, with not being new, I want to hear everybody's input for all of these. Yeah, so, I'm, having a third of the membership not there is. Yeah, and I'll, I'll also just say that, like you know, the meeting has to get scheduled. It has to get scheduled, but it doesn't thr thrill me that um, you know we deadlocked three three on four B, and it's going to come up next time, and two of the three votes on one side of that deadlock won't be there for the meeting. Yeah, and I, I'm I'm still skeptical in bringing four up because I thought we had an agreement <laughs> on that. But uh, I can we can can we send a doodle poll? It has to be Monday or Tuesday. Monday or Tuesday. So you know, it's, it's a, we would have a letter from uh, from Kelly Zuppel. I I think we there there's some other members of the committee that were thinking of coming on Monday already. So if, if you guys are okay <coughs> finding out tomorrow, maybe at some point, if we're having a meeting Monday or Tuesday, I just don't know how magically, I want to make sure that there's enough people here. I want both of you, both of you here too, but if these guys already are not meeting until Monday, but I'm assuming that you have talked to your members about that possible meeting on Monday too. About a possible articles meeting mm -hmm. on Monday. Well, well, it's, well, well Peter, Peter is here. <laughs> there you go. I've yeah. Spoken to that one. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> so can we just do a hand vote of who can do what days here, and then the how many other? I mean, you have one more community <laughs> member. <laughs> Monday. There's late. We have phone calls. What do you think? It'll be a couple of hours. So yeah. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. Seven to nine. Yeah. It's a little late. How about what's Tuesday morning look like? For folks. Yeah. I have to be in Brattleboro on Tuesday morning. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. No, that's what I'm saying. It's that we're, oh, we're, we're gaining 15 minutes, so have a good night. Have a good evening, yeah, everybody. Thank you.